I don't know why my computer decided to run slow. A very red fox following me. It is Yeah. information that should do it guys hey sorry about the delay i can't find my mouse pointer now apparently let's see let's see what that did and i'm right clicking and dragging and it's saying i'm right left clicking it says i'm streaming overwatching the thing but it's long past oh what am i doing I want the energy to start posing in social media right now. Um, I'm going to go back to... What was it? Debbie's had it? Um, promote yourself to his promo. Here we go. Yesterday. What am I going to do, guys? Here we go. Copy text. Continue, my baby Yoda. There we go. Continue. There we go. And there was one other channel I can promote myself, and I can't remember which one it was. Oops. Sorry, guys. That was really loud. Um, I've already dropped 608 frames. Good God. Eleven percent of frames have been dropped. Oh, Lord. Let's hope it improves. My gosh, it's been a bad night. Maybe I can do something to clean, clean up some of the computer issues. One thing is I've got streams open. So let me close up the streams. And close off Twitter, which is probably a live update regardless. Get some of that crap out of here. Just closing off the stuff that doesn't need to be open. In hopes that everything will. Oh, that was. I wanted Instagram open though. And then close Close off everything else that's not essential. See if it, it helps. Uh, well, we're just going to leave it like that because I'm not going to monkey with everything else. There we go. See if that helps. I've dropped 1,058 frames. Good gosh. I haven't even started and I've already dropped frames. Well, there goes a whole bunch more frames. Well, there goes 14% of frames have been dropped. Goodness. Let's see if closing off that helps. 15% of frames. Almost 15% of frames have been dropped. Yikes. Let's see if there's anything else I can do to streamline this even more. Because 15% of frames is pretty garbage. Turn off the Xbox audio. And display capture. Nope. 
Logitech. So hopefully that hasn't been bumped since the last time I did the drawing. It doesn't look like it has been. Okay. I'm slowly dropping less frames, so I guess that's something. For one of the stream, I don't know which one was. Art share. It wasn't buttery, was it? Oh, but if I go to OBS and go online, there's another channel that will say, hey, I'm online, and it's the creative stream, creative team that does it. So let me go to Discord. Discord, that cord, the other cord. It's going to take a minute to come up, and of course, it's going to drop every frame in God's green earth, apparently. Um, but hi, guys. <laughs> um, it's just been one of those nights, hasn't it? Um, everything wants to drop. I feel like it's like, I'm getting less and less frames dropped. I've only dropped 1356 and the percentage is going down. So there's that going for me. It's going to, oh, where's Discord? Oh, I already got Discord open. <laughs> um, is it settings? There you go, user settings. Mm, streamer mode. Streamer mode's on. And that should say, tree modes on. Stay safe, my sound friend. And if I go to Arthagorius' channel, I'm just going to look at Arthagorius' channel real quick. This cartel, but it's the C art tell. It's pretty clever. It says, currently streaming, Jason Neos, baby, out time. Cool. There was another channel, I forget who it was, that said that they have a status as the creatives. ZF art. Strong booties. Oh, here we go, creatives with C with a boink. Live 45. Fierce kittens. I follow her. Look at that. Streaming Baby Yoda time. Boink. Hey, that means that people want to peek in. They'll see Baby Yoda time's running. Cool. All right, that's good. That gets me alerted to folks that being on there. 10% of frames. Yes, it's finally going in the right direction. It's going in the absolutely correct direction, which is not dropping frames and broadcasting smoothly. So. We will resume Baby Yoda here as soon as I get this pulled up. The full video. Boink. Here we go. Hopefully. It's going to be. Did I shift this for Overwatch? No, I don't think I did. Any case. Let's resume. I don't even have a vision for this, guys. I'm just gotta get working on this that's all i know <laughs> my only vision is i need to get working i meant to do test squatches swatches of the colors this week and i totally did not it's been a rough 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 week and it did not end any better than it started tuesday was pretty chill thursday was pretty awesome with overwatch with my friends if y'all tuned into that i feel sorry for how many times we lost <laughs> but all kidding aside though it has been a rough, 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 rough journey. Um, BG80? Yeah, only BG80 will just see zero. But it's, it was a rough, it's been a rough journey, work week wise. So we're gonna take this level here and scale that back just so I can see. There we go, yeah. So that's got a line there, so we're gonna retain that line. This is C0. Oh, I, meant, yeah, I even meant to run my dehumidifier and I didn't even do that. Oh boy, what a week. What a week, guys. <laughs> Not in the best week imaginable either. In the worst way imaginable. Just bad news in my work sector. Not a big fan of the news that I got this week. Not at all. So it's a good time to start the stream to just unwind and make fun art and 
think about Baby Yoda in his little cradle. <laughs> I know I call it a cradle, I just do. So. Got a lot of positive response off of this too, I might add. A lot of folks are loving it, so. I didn't do it to be universally loved. I did it because I just haven't had a chance to actually draw Baby Yoda, and I feel like I missed the trend. Which is okay. I'm not the kind of person to follow trends anyway, so. The fact that I missed it, I'm just like, pfft. Okay, I missed the trend. <laughs> Big whoop. I would rather not catch a trend anyway. I'd rather do it when I feel like I do want to do it, and I feel like the time is right for me to finally do one. So there's that. So that makes me happy. You know, it makes me happy to not, again... I don't mind if I follow a trend. I've just I've never been that kind of person, you know? Like, there's all this trend now to do all these, you know, like, really clever, like, oh, look, I'm going to draw this thing really huge and super fo sharp focus. And I'm like, I'm not that guy to draw. I could draw those hyper-focused eyeballs. It's just, I don't know. It's just like, it's so cliche. You've seen it done before, you know? And it's just not oh, it's something I'm looking to do. Again, I could do it. <laughs> Just because I know, I, I know I'm capable of doing it. Let me move it up there. Am I capable of doing it and kicking it out of the park? Or hitting it out of the park? Of course I am. But, you know, it's not something, again, not something I'm deeply intrigued in trying to start and do. Okay, what are we looking for here? Looking for a brown. Probably this one, E23, right? Let's see what this one is. I knew this was the busted one. How did I know this was the busted one? E15. E15 is not bad. They would label as such.
just make it a little bit richer in color. It's almost smoothly blended, almost. <laughs> Yeah, a little bit wet in that paper, so I'm going to let it dry for a bit. I'm trying to figure out what I want to do for this color, because it's not nearly dark enough yet. So, it gets really dark right here, so. And I might use some of the warm grays just to, to get that even more dark. Because it's just, it needs to be a little bit darker. Actually, it's I'm extending it well beyond where I'm going to cut it, probably. So I'm probably going to cut this down to a smaller sheet. So, oh, where's my blender? There it is. Probably should have put the colorless blender down first. All right, so let's see. C6. Actually, C7 is going to be what I'm going to need next. There we go, C7. Let's punch that up even darker. Yeah, that's much better. C9 because some of the sp spots get really dark. There we go. All right, let's go to some more of the face because I'm, I'm feeling the face is like under loved right now. Where's the there's that one. shadows and shades a little bit better when I start putting all the green in there. There we go, a lot better. And then I'll move it to there, which is the eye that's going to kind of fade it out because the color of the eye is going to kind of make a shadow there. Upper lip is a lot of green, so I'm going to put that in there. A lot of green there too. Now 
not very talkative, guys. I'm trying to <laughs> I'm trying to focus on getting as much as I've done as I can on this for tonight. I want to get it done if I can, but I'm not gonna I'm not gonna force it. Like if it's not ready to go, I'm not gonna just say, oh, it's done. I'm gonna call it a night. No. If I get really close to getting it finished, I'm gonna probably finish it. cute <laughs> I do have to punch up some of the other parts of it though there is a there is some uh, need for yellow greens that I have G21 which G21 look like yeah that'll look good just punching some of the where the greens are and stuff so there's gonna be a little bit of very shiny there's a little bit of yellow green out there there's definitely some yellow greens in there on that part of the eye and there's definitely a lot more cool grays here so let me grab one of the cool grays i've stored up here somewhere stored i just threw them up in a pile <laughs> let me store them up here tosses them into the into the brink c4 oh there's a c9 right there hello looking for you earlier so we're going to fill in a lot of the details of the eye with the c9 just to get all the blackest blacks in there Baby Care Bear, how's it going? I would offer you to do the drop. I have a new drop command I told you about, but I can't do it because I'm filming my speed run. So I need to take the bond of this and make this the speed the speed drawing of it. So I really can't do it. <laughs> oh, otherwise I'd let you I'd offer you the um, the, um, the, the the drop game. I'd show it's pretty cool it, there's nothing to it much except it's a really cool way just to show off any emotes that you have and um just in general and just just for general silliness it's just some fun and some folks have it on a cooldown. I, I wouldn't put it on a cooldown. there's a big drop game and i don't have that program just yet what you up to tonight this is not my normal setup by the way this is my i'm filming a speed drawing so i can't <laughs> i can't have everything on screen otherwise you'd see my face in the Speed running, that'd be completely crazy setup. It's definitely, I need a warmer gray, I think. Actually, not a cooler one. Switch to F5. I meant to see if Sarah could jump on for a bit, but I, I haven't had a chance to actually reach out to her. Except for what we talked about yesterday. Yeah, it's a lot better. Although I don't like that harsh line, but I can blend that out real quick. See, that's why my setup's a little weird right now. It's the um, because I'm filming the speed run. Speed. I keep saying speed run like it's a like it's a video game. Um, because I'm filming the speed draw, I have the video set up so I can just stream my the art surface and not my camera and not the chat. Even though I'm still reading chat, obviously. Just welcome, dropped in, see you run drawing. Oh, thanks. I appreciate it. Well, it's been a while since you've been to my stream. You've been a guest on my stream a couple times recently. <laughs> when you've been available to play Overwatch. Oh, and I have to do some of these wrinkles up here. That's right. I have to go like this. Make these little sounds. Bob Ross was right. You do have to make those little sounds. There's one little pocket right here. A little wedge. Something like that. And then... That, that, that. And there's one more wrinkle here ish. And one more like that. Oh, 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 maybe. Yeah, like that. And then I put the blue green one here. Just woke up. Are you going? Are you going into work just now, or are you just getting done with work, or how's that working? How's that working? <laughs> Apparently, I'm saying work a lot. It's not working for me, but it might work for you to say work all the time. <laughs> doing work while you might be getting ready for work. See what I'm doing? I'm doing all these works. <laughs> or you might be trying to test your luck on Overwatch tonight. Kind of curious though. I've I've had a lot of folks talk about the 
you know, the new, the BlizzCon and how it's online this year, and they're like, do you expect there to be an announcement that's going to be really awesome, or do you think it's just going to be stall until they get Overwatch 2 done, which they've clearly said is not going to be right now? And a lot of folks are like, I'm trying not to get my hopes up because I know there's not going to be anything meaningful content-wise released at BlizzCon this year because, first of all, it's not the right BlizzCon. Second of all, there's nothing ready for... Um, Nothing ready for Overwatch 2. Oh, it's your day off. That's splendid, my man. That's awesome. That is super awesome. I was just telling your bestie the other day. No, that the other day. This morning. Not this morning. This afternoon. <laughs> uh, we were watching something. I think it was probably we were either watching Mannequin 2. Mannequin on the move. Because we watched that. Yes, we did. Or we were watching WandaVision, and I said, hey, I, just, I played Overwatch with your bestie last night. And she goes, bestie! Because it has been a hot minute. Just has been. Work, man. Got more games to win for Reaper. How many more you got? I know I got my nine, and I helped Sarah. I got, actually got ten, because I helped Sarah get her nine. You're probably what four or five because I think we had it like seven or we had, we had a good decent run before you got on. We when I looked at our win loss, I think it was like seven and seven and three, which wasn't bad. I mean, considering that usually we, <laughs> usually we're not doing so hot. And I, I hate to say it, but I think it's because you joined us, meaning not your skill, my man, but because I think the game really gives you ridiculous teammates when you have a stack of three. You know, we've talked about that before, and it's been mentioned before that three stacks seem to have worse luck than two stacks. Yeah, we went seven. We went seven for th seven for three. You know, we won seven, lost three. That's not so bad, right? And then I think, oh, you got seven more wins. I thought you meant seven was laugh laugh out loud. I was like, dude, really? We have it's winning record. Most football teams don't make seven and three. Most sports teams don't make seven and three. <laughs> you mean, um, lull for that you have seven more wins for? Yeah, because I think you joined in just when I was two wins away. So it meant you had the the lion's share left to do today. I really need to organize my pens again, but I don't have time because it's going to be a long process. I'd rather just keep drawing because they'll just get messy again anyway. Seven wins, my dude. Well, if you can, lurk in the stream, not because I want the viewership, but because I want updates about how you're doing with your progress or your wins. That's the only reason I want your lurk. <laughs> the views don't hurt. Don't get me wrong. The views don't hurt. I like lurkers. Lurks are love. But I also just want to be updated on what's going on. While I work on Baby Yoda. I'd love to know you're doing well on that. Because I know it's it's a struggle. When you try to play on the weekends. Or the Friday nights and stuff like that. And Arlene's got on me before. Your bestie's got on me before. Rightly so. She's like, I, you said you never play on the weekends. And then I do. And I get frustrated. Because you get, to quote the guild, casuals. <laughs> I love that. And the guild was like, it'll track the player base. Can only be described as casuals. <laughs> oh, that show cracks me up. That show is so ridiculously funny. I never even played World of Warcraft, but the thing is, the experiences on that show, RV91 is what I want. Um, where's RV91? Even though I've never played World of Warcraft, I can relate to the the game, the show a lot. And I know it's not technically World of Warcraft, but Oh my gosh, I think it's hilarious that they were like, like Blizzard was like, you can't help us in our sales. There's nothing you can do that will improve on Blizzard. All you can do is harm our name. Then they saw the episodes of the guild and they're like, yeah, we goof. We shouldn't let you use our trademark game. <laughs> because like, they were like, nah, you can only hurt us. You're just trying to live off the fame of my, you're just trying to live off our fame right now. You know, World of Warcraft's popular, so you're trying to live off our fame. Then they actually saw episodes and like, yeah, we should have let you use World of Warcraft is an actual thing instead of making you rip off because this show is incredible. It's one of the best things to happen to our culture of World of Warcraft gaming since the game itself. Big mistake. But I mean, a lot of corporations do that though. You know what I mean? Like a lot of corporations make second guess because they all have their corporate brand and they don't want anybody to take a crap all over it. And then you get things like that. And then like, for example, the Lego movie, you know, they, these two writers, like we want to make a movie about Legos. And like, how can you make a movie about a, a, an open ended toy? No, all you can do is hurt our sales. We're Lego. You can't prove anything about our sales. 
they released the Lego movie and sales went up 300%. I think it was actually more like 500% actually, truth be told. But here they were saying, oh, you'll never be able to improve on Lego sales. All you can do is hurt us at this point. And they literally improved sales by a factor of like three. Or I think it was, it was at least two to three percent. Two to three hundred percent. And this is an established brand that always sells. Lego, for gosh sakes. And they made a movie that was very successful. It had a plot that actually revolved around the toy itself, which is crazy because, again, it's an open-ended toy. You build what you want out of it. And what did they do? They made a, a movie that actually captures that spirit, captures the spirit of just building things in general. And surprise is surprise, <laughs> it actually got them more sales. So never assume you know what's going to happen with marketing. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm kind of, that's what's kind of funny about Blizzard making, making a gaffe on the guild, you know? Because they could have had a wonderful opportunity to do a tie-in instead. The best they could hope for with the guild, though, is it's true that we can't put time put in the game time to rank up so we're stuck in casual silver exactly because you need a hardcore squad to go up anywhere and because the thing is the people that are really good at it not that we're not great we're not I mean, we're not great we're good we're solid we have good go game knowledge and i feel like game knowledge should carry at least into gold like it should uh, the, the way i look at it is that they say oh if you have technical skill you'll get up you can't have technical skill on a console you really can't what you need to what you do in console is <laughs> you have to as much technical skill as you can which isn't very much um and then what you do is you level up you, 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 game experience. I'm not saying like playing the game. I'm saying learning from the game. You know what I mean? Like, it's not enough to just be like, oh, I played McCree for 300 hours. You have to play, you'd be like, I, I played McCree for 300 hours and now I use flashbangs in the wrong time. So now I know that. So next time I'm not going to use that again. Learning from your mistakes. That's how you truly level up. And in, at least on a console, because you're not going to, like I said, you're not going to have raw mechanical skill on console. I mean, there is, but in, you know, but there's, it's not like you're going to, you're never going to match the raw mechanical skill of the people playing PC because it's a, it's already a flawed control system. It just is. I accept that flawed control system, but I, I also accept it for what it is. It's flawed. So knowing that I know there's a plateau I'm going to hit. So right now. The best thing I can do is play the right abilities at the right times with my teammates, and that will get you more places. And in fact, your Overwatch will say the same thing. They're like, the best you can do, and I haven't watched them in forever. I don't even know if they still make your Overwatch videos anymore. Um, the best you can hope for is, um, remember that when they were a thing, your Overwatch, remember that was popular? Um, the best you can hope for is trying your best to synergize with your team. You don't have ESP, and unless you have communicators communications on, the best you can do is use your emote wheels and hope to goodness the other person on the other end knows. Like if, you, if you've got a teammate playing Hanzo and you're playing Zarya and your and your ability's ready and their ability's ready, you want to spam. My ultimate is ready. My ultimate is ready. My ultimate is ready. So they know. Okay, you're planning on using. Like if you look right at the Hanzo and say my ultimate is ready, they better sure as sugar know what you're mean. They're you're like I'm waiting to launch this graviton when you've got your dragon ready to go at a, at a beneficial time. So you know, and you spy spam it. You're saying. I am going to launch this. Be ready with your dragon arrow. Be ready. Because if you don't, that's on you, pal. That's literally what you want to do. And But the thing is, you could do that all you want, and they still may not understand what you're talking about, unless they're on open comms. But who's on open comms these days? Come on. It's a little sloppy, man. Because it's wet. Can you hear Arlene laughing in the background? She's so sweet. She really is. <laughs> she has no idea, guys. She has no idea. But yeah, we're stuck in casual silver, my dude. Like, we really are. I mean, I accept my ability. I know I'm not Grandmaster Sniper level. I know that. I'm not stupid. I've played this game enough to know. I know what it is. But at the same time, I also know I'm not dumb as the guy who's playing, you know, Reaper and trying to shoot a Widowmaker 500 yards away because, lol, I'm playing Reaper. I would be smart enough to go, gee whiz, if there's a Widowmaker harassing us, I need to switch to a character that can actually counter her. If I'm playing in competitive, obviously it would have to be like another um, DPS character or else beg our diva to dive them. You know what I mean? Like, I know I'm not going to be, you know, Imong or somebody like that. I'm not going to have that kind of raw skill. First of all, I'm playing with a controller. Second of all, I'm realistic. <laughs> I'm not spending my life, you know, spamming stuff. You know, learning every little in and out of every controller I'm playing. I know what my limitations are. I'm a, I'm a decently smart player that tries to use his abilities as he knows how to use them. As much as he knows. I mean, I know, I said, I know the general 
Like, I know how to play every character in Overwatch. Not well, but I know how, how, how they're meant to be played. Every single one, top to bottom. The only one I'm not good with is Doomfist. Like, I don't know the situation with Doomfist. I can play Doomfist, but big difference between playing Doomfist and actually, um, you know, using his abilities at the right time. I mean, I know it's, he's just a combo character, but at the same time, when I know when to, what characters to dive on, I know not to dive on. Ba I know not to dive on Bastion. I know that for sure is Sugar. <laughs> I was like, how does a character that does that does stuns and pop ups not pop Bastion out of his? It doesn't, and I think it's dumb that it doesn't work. You know, I, I you got a character that really doesn't uppercut, that punches people up on a position, and it doesn't pop the one character that actually depends on being pushed down out of position. I mean, it's like if ba if if. Um, if Ryan charged him, he'd be up against the wall. But if a character with an actual ability to pop, stun, and push up somebody comes up on him, it's like, pfft, merely tickles me. In silver players fight 1v1s, right, and the MVP of, of the game, right, they go for, they play for, um, play of the game. They can mention teammates, you suck. Exactly, they play for play of the game, and that's dumb. You, what you need to do is you need to win Tim, Tim, Tim fights, Tim. All the fights against Tim, and you need to fire at will. Not anybody else, just William. No kidding. Um, but no, you, you, you're exactly right, though. You need to stop fight. But most of these people stop need to stop fighting for play of the game. Because play of the game doesn't win you the game. Play of the game is just a cool highlight at the end. It really is nothing more than a cool... Hey, cool story, bro. At the end. But that's exactly right, my dude. They play for play of the game. Because they're like, oh, but I was good because I got four golds. But four, you know what? You're not winning the gold medal race. What you're, what you're playing in Overwatch is a team fight. You need to win every single team fight, or at least you need to win the important ones. And that's pretty much every single one, but there's a couple you can lose. Some In some games, you can lose a few and still be okay. Like if you got a choke point, you can lose two or three of those in a row. Um, but if you win one team fight on a choke point, like say um, Volskaya, if you win one team fight on Volskaya, you've pretty much got the point. Except on, the, on point two. Like on point one, if you win a team fight, you probably got the point. I mean, how can you not? I mean, once you push them off the point, that's it, you know? But he's exactly right, Kirby. You got to make me laugh because it's like, they want to, you know, using voice. They want to mention the teammates and say, you sulk. <laughs> that's about right. It's true, though. It's, they want that, lols, gg, easy. Oh, my name is Rod and I own a dealership. Oh. Sorry, that's my, my smug guy voice. Whenever I, I think of smug people, I always imagine that they're named Rod. I actually had a, a guy who went by the, whose name was Rodney. I had to work with him in customer service today. And his name was, his email said Rod. And I was like, oh, my name is Rod. <laughs> Rod. <laughs> it just sounded like the most jerkish name of all time. I don't know why it just does to me. I'm like, that sounds like one smarmy dude. <laughs> Forgive me if you know a Rod and he's a nice guy. I would like to know him if he's a nice guy, but. <laughs> Rod. <laughs> Chump change. <laughs> There was a, what do you call it, uh, PC uh, CD-ROM of um, Monopoly. <laughs> and I used to play that when I painted because it would be huge gaps between turns, you know, especially with a team of like six or eight players. And they're all AI. So you have a team of like seven or eight players and all AIs. And I want to say it was the, the horse or the shoe... And whenever he would, um, like, if he landed on a property that was a high property, um, high money, high rent, to show off, to be like it was nothing, but <laughs> pocket change. Whenever he paid rent. I was like, you punk. You know that cost you a pretty penny, you jerk. Trying to show off. I imagine guys like that are named Rod. <laughs> I really do imagine guys like that are named Rod. <laughs> Rod. <laughs> I'll see you at the tennis club, chump. <laughs> I don't know why. That name just sticks with me as being the... Jerkiest of all names. Is this still drying? Yeah, it's still drying. It seemed a little on the dry side. Like a sherry, it seemed a little on the dry side. Although I don't have, I don't have cherry. I don't have sherry either. I have um, coffee. It's a little bit weird. Um, I think I want to remove the end, the play of the game. Maybe even remove the badges it promotes to Lone Wolf and RPG team. Game. Exactly, exactly. I'm not against it. Like a lot of people that are like really smart about Overwatch, the first thing they'll say is play the um, the medals are only an indicator of what could have gone wrong. In other words, 
if you've got a soldier with golds, that was fine. You know, that's as it should be. But if you've got a Zenyatta and they've got gold deep damage, gold eliminations, something went wrong. It either means the DPS didn't do their job or the Zenyatta was too busy playing around that their, his teammates were dying. So, you know, again, it can it can indicate a, a shortcoming, but only if you're smart enough to interpret it. Like, if you're just going to sit back and go, I got gold elims, and you're a Hanzo with three gold elims, you have to, three elims and that's gold, you're going to have to ask yourself, how is three, just three, gold? Like, that's the only thing it should make you do. It shouldn't go, oh, I'm gold, I'm justified. No, gold crap is still crap. So you can dip that in solid gold all you want, but 24 karat crap is still 24 karat crap. So, I mean, that's the only way it works. You have to, you, you have to, again, it's just raw data. That's all the play, that's all the gold medals are, is raw, raw data. You have to have the brains to interpret it. You have to look at it and go, this is how it is. And too many people, instead of using it as raw data to interpret, they use it as justification. Well, since I've got gold medals, I'm blah, 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 blah. I'm the best player in the game. I shouldn't have to switch. Uh, you know how many times I've switched when I've had gold medals to a different character because our team wasn't cutting it? Almost every single time I've had to switch. Almost. Not every time. I'd say about, I'd say it's about 50%. And the argument would be, you know, why are you switching if you're, if you've got gold medals? Because the gold medals don't matter if you're not winning your team fights. Otherwise, it's just, a, it's a pretty thing you can hang on your wall. Take a screenshot of it, you know? But again, people convinced that medals... We live like the Olympics culture, man. You know what I mean? We think, oh, we won. I got gold medals. I won. No. You won the biggest dummy award for letting them win the game because you think you did good because you got a, a medal or two. Again, medals mean absolutely nothing in Overwatch. They're just, they're pretty decorations. And again, if you don't interpret them right, they might, you, they could be, they could be indicators of what went wrong. I like play the game though, but the fan base, and I think originally they weren't supposed, they didn't want medals because for that very reason, Jeff Kaplan, I think, said it would promote too much of that, and it's exactly what's happening. Too many people use this justification of, I did right, because look at me, I've got, I've got, you know, I've got all these gold medals. I must have did great. I must be amazing. And the, and again, I come back to the whole point of, well, if you're playing, if you're playing a DPS, having, D, you know, most eliminations is a given. You should be. You should be having the highest medals and eliminations. If you don't, then I would be asking yourself, what didn't I do right? I mean, that's like, that's like boasting the only car in a race won. Congratulations, you were the only car. I mean, what did you want? A bicycle to come out of nowhere and just try to ride, <laughs> road race you? That's not going to happen. That bicycle is staying on the sidelines because this is an automobile race and your car is the only one in it. You know, and that's what it's so dumb about when people are like, oh, well, I got gold eliminations. I mean, darn right we should have. You sat eight minutes in a DPS queue, you better have gotten gold eliminations. <laughs> Gold eliminations are a riot, you know what I mean? It's like, come on, guys. Stop boasting about doing your job. I did my job so good, guys. I picked Garbage Man, and I picked up garbage bags. Oh, good job. <laughs> and I know that's why people... And the funniest part is people will complain and moan that people want vote for the healing. You want thanks for doing your job? Well, you want to be boastful about getting gold medals at the DPS, so what do you want? <laughs> you, I would like to see Kill Vons a successful team plays. That's much better. I like that idea. I'm bored of kill feeds of Torbs walking around floor Genjis and Bash. <laughs> Bash rest wide. Exactly. I'm not gonna lie. That is disappointing. You'll see a Torbjorn fall down on the gro ground. Molten core falls down on the ground. His knees buckle. All of a sudden, it, you see him like you see his dead body, and you see eliminated, 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 respawned, eliminated. <laughs> Team kill, and you're like he was literally dead. For most of that, literally for all of it, he was dead. And his his auto gun did all the work. Play the game, you go to Torb's turret, and not him, because he was garbage. But it, it's it's very it's very annoying to see those kind of plays in the game. And I get you on that, man, because it's it's true. It's absolutely true. It's like why why though? As someone who plays a lot of Sim, I can understand that being a frustration because I'm like I don't know how many times I've had to play the game and I've giggled at it. Because I know somebody had to be screaming at their TV because I died and my turrets got three kills. So you know somebody on the red team is like, That guy got play the game for doing nothing. He died. And you're like, <laughs> Yeah, I'm that kind of troll. I don't even care. You know what I mean? Like those, I mean, I hate to say it, but I do get kind of salt. I do kind of get 
reverse salty. I get boastful about that. I was like, hey, you know they're mad about that one. Because <laughs> it's true. Because you know if it was the other way around, I would be upset about it. Like, I would be like, why is this guy getting play of the game? He didn't do anything except press Y. And it's true. And I get that. Why so? The colors are not blending as even as I'd hoped they would. That's okay. I can work on it some more. But it's true. I, I like that, though. A, a, team, a well won team fight would be a much more interesting play of the game, honestly. Play of the game goes to the blue team for doing everything amazing in a team fight. Although I will say the one thing I do like about play of the game is it's one of the few times in Overwatch where individual effort is kind of emphasized above the team effort. It should be the team effort emphasized above everything. But more and more things in Overwatch have switched over to the um, individual. So many solo kill games and kill elimination games. Because remember, Overwatch never used to have 3v3, uh, 3v3 team fight. It never used to have 8 versus team fights. It never used to have 4v4 death matches. I like kill. I like play the. I play the game. I like um. Uh, the the capture the flag game modes. Most people hate them. You know why I love them? Because it brings Overwatch back to its team origins. It's a team game. You shouldn't be going off going solo kills. And it's not even about eliminations either. Like Overwatch was built to be an objective based game. Of two teams trying to do objectives. So some game modes are doing the same objective, capturing a point. Other game modes are doing opposite objectives, defending or taking the point. So to me. Game modes like, even though I like playing them, like um, eight verses and six verses and all those kinds, all of those are not what Overwatch was ever meant to be. And Jeff Kaplan, the game director of Overwatch, fought from the very beginning not to have those game modes because he's like, no, that's not what Overwatch is. Overwatch is a team game about achieving objectives together, not running around killing stuff. And of course, the fans moaned and complained, and guess what they got? And I feel like the I feel like the game itself is in a great place. I feel like the fan base is absolutely the worst, most toxic, and worst. Because they've been trained on four verses and six verses and eight verses to be solo killing lone wolves. And then they go into, into um, the, the team modes and bellyache because people want to play like a team. <laughs> and that's why I've never liked Overwatch becoming a battle royale game. Never have liked the idea, never have liked any game mode that basically tries to promote that because of that very reason. It just it fosters an environment of... Hey, let's have a lone wolf and kill everything. And that's Halo, that's Fortnite, that's Call of Duty. It's every other game out there. I liked Overwatch precisely because it wasn't like every other game out there. It was the exact opposite of every other game out there. That's why I liked Overwatch. It was special. It reminded me of Team Fortress 2, but I sucked at Team Fortress 2. And let's be honest, Overwatch kind of trumps it a little bit in terms of design. Not that Team Fortress 2 has a poor design. Au contraire. Team Fortress 2 has a fantastic design. Um, like, if you, I, I write up on like what they went behind for making the models and the, and the maps and stuff, and they did a good job of it. But at the same time, compare Bl uh, Valve's design team, no offense, to Blizzard's design team, and Valve can't hold a candle to Blizzard's art direction. No offense. Again, no offense. Because if they did, <laughs> they'd release more games in... <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm, I'm just be salty here. They'd have more than one and two of a game. I mean, Overwatch doesn't even have a two yet, but at least StarCraft has a two. And Diablo has a four. So, again, you know, it's like, um... They're not ones to talk, you know? They can't even release more than one, more than two of one game. So, just, you know, throwing that out there. <laughs> but I love my Valve games, too. But, again, having said that... Um, where's my green? Having said all that, as much as I love my Valve games, they still, I don't think Team Fortress 2's design holds a candle to the brilliance of Overwatch's character design, its environments. I even like the maps of Team Fortress 2. <gasps> what? Matt, thank you for the renewed... Are you here, Matt? Are you here or did it just automatically renew because you weren't here? I've been assuming you were here. My mouse is being stupid because I'm not in the right window. Maybe you just joined on. Yeah, but it's true what you just said. Devel the developers listen too much to the casual and the Overwatch League players. The biggest one is the Overwatch League player. Where's my mouse pointer? I completely lost it, guys. Oh, there it is. 
You're lurking. Thanks, my dude. How are you today? Oh, we got to record our thing, don't we? I looked at it already. I read the script already. I don't know if I told you. The developers listen too much to casual and Overwatch League players. The largest player base are in mid-silver gold, and they are point they, are add they add pointless cues to the game. Yeah, like that wonderful, <laughs> the wonderful. Have you have you played have you played your your um? What do I want to say? Um, help me out here. Have you played your flex so you can get your useless ticket, bro? <laughs> Here's your feel-good ticket. See you on the see you two minutes in the queue. <laughs> I mean, it kind of is. I thought I thought it was just me. I was like, it doesn't feel like it's really doing much. You're like, and you're over here. It's not. It doesn't change the queue at all. <laughs> and I'm like, you're right. It doesn't. Not one. To paraphrase um, what Tom Hanks said on SNL, not a damn thing. <laughs> I just rated my stream at PG. Sorry, y'all. <laughs> There's a funny skit when um, Tom Hanks is playing. It's called Black Jeopardy. <laughs> and um, this is on SNL. And so the clue is, this is what skinny girls can do for you. And Tom Hanks is this biggest white red neck dude goes, not a damn thing. <laughs> I always thought that was the funniest thing I've ever heard. The way he just says it like the biggest redneck in the world. Because he's playing a redneck character. Oh my gosh, that is the funniest thing. I mean, they've had all the great Black Jeopardy skits. They had Chadwick Boseman actually play Black Panther on it. And oh my gosh, it's so... If you watch him play Black Panther on that, it's so funny. I'm doing good trying to figure out the best way to set up my stream for clay sculpting. The straight down approach where the camera doesn't seem to show all the details. I think it does just fine, Matt. I'm not trying to be a poo-pooer and look down on improvement, but I don't think, I'm not seeing, the problem is you're seeing it in 3D in front of you, you're seeing it right there, you're not, you're seeing angles we don't see on the screen, a second camera could possibly help, it might make it a little bit more interesting, not that it's boring now, but a second camera might give you a little bit more of the views you want, views, angles you want, a second camera can get you lots of views. And you know what, uh, guys? I've seen this 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 person, this character that goes around this this channel, and he sent, he promises if I click on his link, I can increase my views and followers. I, I wish he'd come back. Cause I, I I I just think if I click on his link, I'll get more followers. Don't you think, guys? He promised me. His name was like Dog Dogfighter Fifty Two. And there was all these cool characters on there, so I know he's a hacker. There was all these cool characters in his in his message. What do you think, guys? Do you think I should give him a try? I think he's just trying to get my. That could be a, right. Could be possible. Oh, the camera's possible. I'm like, no, Matt. That other thing is a spam link. Don't click on it. But, <laughs> but no, I think a second camera would be good. Like, put one in a different angle. Because, again, you're seeing it at every possible angle. The camera's static. You can't fight that. The only way to fight that would be to actually have a second camera to show you more possibilities. I think that would be a good idea. If you can afford a second camera. Even if you have a cheap El Cheapo camera for one angle. You know, even if it's just El Cheapo. I think that would help. Especially since you're working in 3D. I'm working on a flat surface, so it's, it's okay for me to flat, be the top down. But I think from two different angles would be cool. Some people even have like, um, they'll have like a palette cam. I'm looking for my C2, where'd it go? There it is. Let's try and get spread out again, guys. This is not good. This is not looking good. It's not looking good. I'm looking for C2 and I don't even remember what for anymore. That sucks. I had the dreaded butt for. Mern Twitch, hi, I feel like I've met you before. I know I've met you before. Wait, did, I, did we meet in Cassidy's stream? And how are you today? Regardless if we met in Cassidy's stream or not, how are you today? Or maybe you came last time. I'm good with remembering that I know a name. I'm horrible with remembering where I met the name. <laughs> Welcome to my life, buddy. <laughs> they double the DPS queue time and then give you a ticket to reward you for a terrible, playing a terrible healer. Right? Well, you have to win to get the tickets though, don't you? Also wish me luck to try my first painting on clay tomorrow. Good luck, dude. I don't even know how you would do that. Throw a game to join the real queue. <laughs> Lulz. Yeah, I was here from last week. Oh, for Debbie from Debbie's Raid. Oh, funny story about that. A good story. 
I, Debbie's an awesome streamer. I watch her a lot. I try to look on her a lot because her, her community is so positive. And so I love lurking on her channel just to build up her stream. <laughs> Me either. <laughs> yeah, I don't know the first clue about painting on, painting on stuff like that. I'm like, ooh, prime it? Do I prime it? Do I not prime it? What do I do? What do I do with this? I, how you do this? And I'll be pestering all my friends. Hey, you painted on clay before. How do you do it? It's on YouTube. Look it up. <laughs> but no, seriously, someone will actually help me out a lot. Um, but yeah, Deffy's streams are always so wonderful. I love her, um, her spirit and how hard she works on stuff. And she's very honest with her community. Like, I think she was having a bad day the other day, and it looked like she was really sad. And I was like, oh man. And I saw a wonderful post about that today, talking about how. It's important that people, if they're going through a struggle, to talk about it because it helps other people. And I've always felt that, and that post kind of confirmed it. So she never, she always does it in a very positive way to help us, to help people understand. That's what I love about Debbie's streams. Plus, she's also a very talented artist. She's very creative in thinking. You can see her thinking about things and coming up with cool things. Like it never amazes me when you zoom in on one of her her digital paint drawings to see all the details. Like little tiny things that I'd be like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that. And she's thought it through to the point where there's like little tiny hearts on something. And I'm like, who's gonna zoom in to see that those little dots are tiny hearts? But she's thought of it. It has that level of detail in it. Oh no, my camera froze. Oh no, there it goes. Okay. How's my drop frame rates? Oh, it went down to five. I dropped 5,000 frames and it's only 5.4%. Um, but yeah. Um, so anyway, going back to what I was saying about Debbie's stream, I literally followed, I, I went after I was done here and I rated Nekatiji. Um, Nikki, she's an awesome uh, fantasy spooky artist that paints stuff in Australia. Uh, she's an Australian artist that paints all these kind of spooky things. I always say too spooky to be cute and too cute to be spooky. And anyway, I rated her and then she rated Cassidy. Um, Cassidy Austin Art. I never met her before. Woke up in the middle of the night and was still lurking. And I was like, oh, I've been brought here. Greetings. Talked to her for about four, 30 minutes, an hour before I got sleepy again, fell back to sleep. And then I woke up later on to resume what was going on. And she brought me to Innovates, who's a watercolor artist that I've never even known, uh, who does diva impressions while she does her watercolors. So here I am. I'm like, oh, I know this person. <laughs> that was my, the previous raid brought me to somebody I already knew. Congratulations. And I followed it for another, oh, I don't know, almost 24 hours I followed it. Over 24 hours. Because Debbie raided me at 9 Eastern. And I was, I end, the raid finally concluded. The raid train finally ended at... Um, at two in the morning the next day. So I lurked while I was asleep, woke up and looked where, where I'd been since. And it followed me through a bunch of folk, folks I had never met before. And the last artist transferred me to a miniature painting artist. And then from then on, I just followed people painting figure, figure stuff, which wasn't bad. The last guy basically played Apex at the end of his stream and then shut down his stream and then didn't transfer anybody at two o'clock in the morning. He was kind of the least favorite stream that I'd, I'd been put in the middle of. <laughs> and I was like, well, that stinks, because he was my least favorite one. He didn't raid anybody. That was kind of self-serving. Way to kill that train, dude. But yeah, it all started with Debbie's raid on me in, at 9 that night on last Tuesday, wasn't it? Or last Friday. No, it was last Tuesday, right? Was this? No, was it this Tuesday? Yeah, it was this Tuesday, because I've only been working on Baby Yoda for a couple days now. So, yeah. So that was... Whew. That was fun. That was like my best, most favorite part. Bye, Matt. I saw what you said about the um, doing mini streams during the week. That seems pretty cool. Throw a game to get during the week. <laughs> I reread that one, but it's still funny. That doesn't mean it's not funny. Um, but yeah, so it was quite a fun journey. And like I said, it was kind of cool to wake up and then uh, after my actual sleep and see that I was in a familiar place. I was like, I was like, Innovates, hi, I was brought here by a raid of a person I did I just now met. And I already know you, so hi. <laughs> that happened a couple nights ago. I was I was streaming watching one friend, and she's part of a stream team, and the stream team leader. Uh, I was like, you know what, let me drop in on her, because I know I've known her for years. So dropped in on that one. And then um when she was done streaming, she's like, you know what? My stream stream team member is also you didn't spam. Hush. You didn't spam at all. Um, there's a reason why my chat's not on, because as you know, I'm filming the speed paint. So when if you come back in the future, which I hope you will, you'll probably see more of my traditional setup, which is, you know, more of um, cameras on, camera on me, camera on the camera. Why does it keep fr stop freezing? How much? 
Okay, what are you doing here? There we go. I mean, you won't see it in the speed paint when it's all said and done, but I'm still like, mm -hmm. get moving, camera. You got one job. Show me drawing stuff. What's up? What'd you say, babe? Oh. Okay, baby, I love you. My wife's got the sleepies. She's tired. It's been a long week for her, too. I was in stereo when I went... Whew. I was thinking about the difference between Star Trek and Star Wars. Yes, I know. I remember you now. See, when she said last you were here last time, I'm like, I remember we talked quite a bit. It was you and I think one other person. But you were the one that was talking the most. And I'm a, I'm a big chat. When I'm in somebody else's stream, I chat a lot. So if you've been in Debbie's streams, you've probably seen me a ton in her streams. Because I'm a chatter. I'll, I'll chat too much. I'm like... I need to be quiet and let her work, you know? But I think she appreciates the community being active. So I try not to beat myself up too much about those sorts of things. You know what I mean? Like, I have to remind myself, if she didn't want people to chat in her stream, she wouldn't be on Twitch. She would just be like, hey, Sarah, how's it going? He's coming into life and looking adorable as usual, right? I feel like I'm getting a little bit, if, if I could stop dropping frames, I would be doing quite, great, quite, quite good. Good and great, great and good. We should just go. <laughs> But Sarah, how are you doing? It's good to see you again. Matt was here last time. My sister's going to watch Star Trek living right now. Which one? Original series? The movie series? Okay. Motion, the, the Calvin series of, of movies? The, um... This is a Calvin series of movies. That's the one with J.J. Abrams. They're called the Calvin series. There is the um, original series. The um, Next Gen series. The classic movie series. There is also Deep Space Nine. Um, uh, Voyager. Enterprise. Discovery. Um, Picard, Lower Decks. Yeah, Matt was definitely here last time. That's a that's a friend of mine, I O L, who also supports the channel, which I am super happy of. I'm always happy with anybody that's a friend that drops value. I'm also happy to make new friends here. You don't have to be a friend to drop by. Trust me. I don't want to be one of those rooms that's like, oh, you're my you're the, you're the person that I I know already. Her, I'm only talking to you. Her. That's just rude. Plus, I'm not here to just do that. I love it when my friends come in and I will talk to them. But if I'm just here talking to my friends, why don't I just make a Zoom call and I'll talk to them? You know? I'm here for the new people. I'm here for my friends. Both. And I don't mind questions about my art, too. I should probably put a uh, command that pops it up every once in a while. Because I don't mind answering questions about my art. My art, personally, or art in general. Like, if somebody comes in and says, hey. That's something I like about Debbie's streams, too. Is she'll do that, too. But... I mean, if I'm not here to answer questions about art to help other folks along the way, why am I here either? You know, I'm, it's just a vanity stream at that point. Me showing off, like, look at how good I can draw. Ho, ho. That also does. I mean, some people are probably on here because they they have a fan base that wants to see them do create things. Jim Lee's on here occasionally, so I get that too. Sarah, I'm good. I'm trying to get a solo dub for the first season, and I'm feeling miserably. Oh, no. Voyager at the moment. Voyager, I don't know. I, I feel like the Voyager fan base hates and the Deep Space Nine fan base largely. And the Deep Space Nine fan base hates largely on the Voyager fan base. But you know what? I like both. I'm allowed to like both, you know? I don't need to please anybody. I can just be like, you know what? Deep Space Nine had some very important political themes that makes it very interesting and very deep. And Voyager felt like the same kind of things, but with a family. Because, um, I mean, let's be honest. Deep Space Nine was not a family. Um, they were just a collection of ragtag people that happened to cross each other in a space station. And not... <laughs> Those are the kind of people you want to spend a close proximity with. Some of the more killers, man. I'm a solo on Overwatch. Hi, nerd girl. Are you soloing on uh, Open Queue? Like, yeah, Open Queue. Blah. On Quick Play or on um, Competitive? I need to get in there and get my placements done on Competitive, but ugh. It feels so much like work. I don't. I feel like I'm at the job again. I don't want to, you know. I want to play Overwatch on Wine. Now I feel like I'm working again. <laughs> Yuck. Yucka, yucka. <laughs> Or as my friend Meredith would say, gah, 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 gah. Gah, 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 gah. Um, just did fan art for a streamer. I sent it to them. Oh, who's the streamer? You okay to talk about what streamer it was? <laughs> mostly. Oh, mostly you're allowed to talk about. There's a few I would be like, please don't mention that name in my stream. <laughs> I won't mention the name of who I'm thinking of, but there's one person I'm like, oh, maybe don't mention that one. But I'm, I'm trying to get well-connected in the art community. And I think I'm kind of okay there. Like, I'm kind of okay with that. You know what? 
I forgot to ask you that. Last time you said you drew a horse, and you know what I forgot to do? I forgot to say, could you send me a quite a different streamer style? I can jump up to watch this game, Care Bear. Let me see what time is it. 10.30, 10.15. Yeah, I can't do it. I didn't type the U. I can jump on Overwatch after this game, Care Bear. You. <laughs> that is not what you meant, I know. I think I just accidentally raised up my monitoring. I'm sorry if I screamed on the mic, guys. Rip headphone users. F in the chat for headphone users. Quite a different streamer style. Yeah, who's the streamer? If you can tell me. If you can tell me, please tell me. But then I'll know if I can share it, if I can share your drawing. AFK. Your AFK or the streamer's AFK? <laughs> <laughs> I'm puzzled. I do not know. I'm also trying to figure out what I'm gonna do about the that that robe because I don't know what I'm gonna do about the robe. I really don't know what I'm gonna do about the robe, guys. There we go. The streamer, I think, is AFK, right? That's their name. Aren't they... A, if, if, if AFK is a gaming streamer, or you're AFK, I don't know which. Because I thought AFK was a gaming streamer. Like a name of an actual gaming streamer. Um, but you also said last time you'd drawn some horses before. So, and I never asked you to sh if you could post a link... Probably because I was afraid the link would actually time you out. Because sometimes my bot will time people out for posting a link. And I, I meant to do that. I, I, after the stream was done, I was so flustered because I've never been raided before. And I was just like, that guy was in my stream telling me that you drew a horse. And I never asked to look at it. What a dummy. Because I was just so flustered that I never, because I'd never been raided before. And I talked I talked to Debbie about that today. I said, oh my gosh, I didn't know what to do. I was so flustered because I'd never been raided before. She goes, oh, I've been there. I remember my first raid. <laughs> like... Well, it's nice to kind of open up to Debbie about that, you know, because she's, you know, she's been streaming for six years. I can't, couldn't believe it. And I'm like, full-time content creator. I'm like, I wouldn't mind being where she's at. I'm also know I've got a long, up, long, a long uphill battle to get there. But, you know, I'm just happy doing what I'm doing right now. If I can do full-time streaming, fine. If I don't, also fine. I love what I'm doing. But I also look up to people like Debbie that are full-time content creators. I'm like, she has my respect. But yeah, I completely choked, dude. If you have a link you can share, and it's safe for work, <laughs> then you know please please put that in the in the in the chat. It should be fine. The other streamer I sent fan art to is heading to sleep now, so oh, you can send me the link, right? I mean, you don't—they don't have to be awake. They—I mean, I just have to be awake, right, to see it, right? Or is it like you can't share it because it's exclusively only for what they see? Because I know some fan arts are kind of like you know if they've prearranged it with the person they have to actually like you know i cannot show you because you know not a dcma but a respect thing you know okay so the background's not so bad now although i do want to kind of take the darkest color and kind of match that in Ah, oh, the Voyager is so is so loud it's hard to hear. Now I'm curious what episode it was. Living Witness is a great episode. Latent image is decent. I'm naming the episodes with this, with the holographic doctor, but these are also very good episodes. Um Yeah, those are those are some of my favorite ones in the middle runs of Voyager. The Year of Hell, of course, is always gonna be a great one. There's never it's Year of Hell is never not gonna be good. But it's almost so obvious to name Year of Hell as a, part, as a great episode of Voyager. It's like, oh, yeah, Year of Hell. Yeah, of course. Yawn. It's the easy one to pick, you know, Year of Hell. It's almost like shooting fish in a barrel to name um, Year of Hell as a favorite episode. It's like, oh, yeah, of course, Year of Hell. <laughs> when they first got Seven of Night. Yeah, it's to me, when they first got Seven of Night, I liked Cass a lot, actually, as a character. I know I'm probably the minority in that one. I did like Cass, but at the same time, I also feel like adding Seven of Nine was a lot like adding um, when they added um, 
I almost lost a marker off the edge of my table, and that would have been hard for me to go recover at this moment. I also feel like when they added um, Worf to Deep Space Nine, because they did three things on Deep Space Nine that really changed the show. Um, yeah, that's a good one. Robin's Egg Blue. No, Pale Porcelain Blue. B triple zero. They did three things on Deep Space Nine. They brought the Klingons as permanent people. Worf became a cast member, and I hate to say it, but... Um, <laughs> James, uh, um, what's his name that plays Cisco? I can't remember his name now all of a sudden. He shaved his head. I know that sounds like a stupid thing to say. He shaved his head. But he, by his own admission, says, I played Cisco differently after I shaved my head than before. He admits that. So, yeah, Kess was cool. I think Kess added a cool dimension to the show. Because here was a character that had no... They, and that was one, one thing they, they talked about a lot in a lot of people that talk about the forums and stuff. They, Cass was somebody that had a, a fresh viewpoint, the same curiosity that Star Trek had, the Star Fleet supposedly has, but she wasn't Starfleet. So she didn't technically have to obey their rules. She didn't have their culture, but she did share their curiosity. So that made her a kindred spirit, even though she was an alien species. So there's a lot of good things about Cass. I know Cass gets, like I said, a lot of hate. Some of that coming from the fact that... Um, the woman that played her kind of came in some legal troubles. But not, that notwithstanding, um, you know, that's, you know, I don't think that's a reason to hate on a character, even if you don't like the actor or the actress involved. I think it's a poor reason. It's certainly a reason to consider that they should continue working on a show, but I don't think you should hate the character because of the person that played them. I think that's a, like I said, I don't think that's a, a relevant discussion. Now, I will say this, get, when they got rid of J John Zia Esri, I like Nicole DeBauer as an actress. I think she's very capable. I think she was given a thankless job, and it wasn't. she did a good job with a thankless role. But, oops, that was almost the wrong color. I was supposed to be grabbing the color, colorless blender, and I missed. But I think John Zia, John Zia was, was fantastic. There's no replacing John Zia. Let's just have to, we have to acknowledge, there's just no, first of all, right out the gate, there's no replacing John Zia Dax, period. That's just never going to happen. There's never going to be anybody that could replace um, Terry Farrell as, as Jadzia Dax. Now, I remember reading a lot about that. They were like, man, she was such a cold fish to start with. And it's true. They wrote her as very boring and kind of straight to the line. But when they added that warmth in there, just that little bit of warmth, and when she started saying stuff like, yeah, but it would be fun. Then you're, that's when they added in that boost of, you know, she was like, she was, went from being, you know, by the book Dax to being playful, you know, hey, let's have fun. And, you know, I'm, I'm 700 years old, let's have fun now, <laughs> Dax. Which was, of course, the one we all know and love. But at the same time, it's like, um, I felt, yeah, I was mad when Ezra came in. I don't, like at first, I, when, I, when I first started watching the show, I didn't understand what was going on, truth be told. Um, and I was like, oh, this is her sister, because I had the volume on low, because I just got off of work. So I, when I, you know, I knew it was a Dax, and I was like, oh, it's her sister, because I, I knew they look kind of alike, you know, both had dark hair. Um, very kind of mysterious personalities to a degree. And I didn't realize it was because they hired, you know, it wasn't, you know, it was the Dax symbiont in a different body. And I was like, oh, that makes sense because they already established that. Right, duh. <laughs> so I don't know why I thought the other... I, of course, I was brand new to Deep Space Nine, so I was still learning. But, yeah, and we all know the reason why. And if you don't know the reason why, I can fill you in. Worf and Jad's your work, cute couple. Oh, my gosh. I can't watch Change of Heart because it breaks my heart, literally. Um, watching... That episode, I'm like, yeah, that would be me. I would not be letting my wife die on a mission to rescue some seedy Cardassian who probably wouldn't give him his crap anyway. I'd be like, bump that. I am that that Cardassian, that dirty Cardi spoonhead dies. And you're not supposed to be racist on, <laughs> on Twitch, but I'm being fake racist because Cardassians don't exist. But that spoonhead would die. Um, <laughs> but yeah, I, I did. I mean, I thought they were they, they were supposed to be sisters because they didn't really say much much about Jadzi. I don't think. And it's possible they could have said, oh, she's got a sister we never really talked about. Because, you know, lol. And it's true, it could have been. You know, we don't know. But, yeah, it was, yeah. But Nicole DeBoer, going back to that, the whole reason they did that was because I was told, or at least I was, I read in books, that the reason why they, she wanted off the show was, quote, unquote, I didn't have enough action scenes. That was the polite reason. That's not the actual reason. The real reason is, is according to now, now she's kind of like, you know what, this is how it actually was, guys. The real reason was G21. I can't find them. Okay, there it is. I'm looking for the yellow green one. Where is it? BG90 probably do it. Sorry, I'm leaving you suspense. The real reason is, how point 
At that point, I was going to file a complaint against the species Cardassian. <laughs> right? <laughs> there was a video game, um, I'm going to sidetrack for just a minute, called, um, what was it called? Um, Star Trek Dominion War. It was a real-time strategy where you could fly your, not real-time strategy, it was like a ships, you'd send in units of ships. Um, and you could, you, you wouldn't tell it where to aim, you'd just say, fire at this ship, fire at that ship. Um, yeah, I'll come back to it, I'm so sorry, I'll come back to it, I promise. And um, you get to play as either the Federation and fight all these series of battles to, you know, liberate, you know, the allies from, the, the allied races from, you know, do, you're doing diplomatic, not diplomatic missions, but humanitarian missions to rescue, run supplies to people that are suffering, help out the, the I think actually help out the Maquis too, because you're, the Maquis are actually, what's left of the Maquis are supposedly fighting um, the Cardassians in the Dominion War, so you're like, hey, we can help them out too. Because, you know, pfft, hey, you know, who cares? The enemy of our enemy is our friend, right? So all that stuff, right? And then um, you can also play as a reverse side and help the Cardassians win the Dominion War. And the first speech is Gul Dukat. They actually have Gul Dukat's voice actor. And he says, For too long, we Cardassians have wielded to the outrageous demands of the Federation. We've allowed them to redraw our borders, uh, colonize our territories, and uh, I can't remember the rest of the speech, but that's how it started. And that's go classic Gul Dukat. <laughs> the Jem'Hadar were so cool, in my opinion, with the white as the bloodline. Right? It was really good. And my favorite actor, I think, on Star Trek, especially, it's not my, my absolute favorite, but he's probably my favorite character actor, is the wonderful and talented Jeffrey Combs. Oh, my gosh. As Wayun, well, first as Brunt, and then as Wayun. Um, and he's like, oh, the treachery. I love when you say stuff like that. To think that a Wayun could be capable of such treachery. It's like he just says the craziest stuff, and um, like I, I'll never forget when they, they had the escape pods near the end, and at, at the end of the show, and they basically the Cardassian, I mean the Dominion forces wiped the floor, and he's like, "So many escape pods, so little, so vulnerable. I'll have them eliminated immediately." And the female shapeshifters are like, "No, don't kill them. <laughs> let them go back home with to uh, frighten their frighten the let the survivors frighten everybody." But I mean, here he's ready to like, you know what? Here's a bunch. A bunch of shuttle pods, escape pods. Let's just kill them. What? What, Wayun? What? <laughs> but Odo hit, hits the fields. Oh, don't even talk to me about my mom and Odo. I almost cried the day of Renee Vision while I died. Odo is my spirit animal. If you, and again, oh my gosh, if you want to see an episode that will make your heart ripped out, the, what is it? The, uh, the, the Forsaken? No, no, not the Forsaken. Is it the Forsaken? The Begotten, the Begotten, the one where he comes up to D Dr. Moira Pell, he, Odo, Quark sells him a dying changeling because he's like, he's, he's, he's dying and he raises him up as a, um, I've got to wait, is that a spell on my screen? You know your favorite character. <laughs> well, Odo is probably my favorite of all, um, just because I related a lot to him because he was an outsider. I felt very much like an outsider in college, so, but I, I never could, never could manage to grasp the raspy voice but no neither could Rene Bergenois apparently like when he if he wasn't wearing the mask he could not do it he says I can't do the Odo growl without the mask on I have to be wearing the the latex mask that they put on my face I says I without it I can't do Odo <laughs> so I thought that was funny but to go back to Terry Farrell real quick I didn't mean to skip over that story but suppose what actually happened was she was like you know what I need to get off of the show I need I've got other opportunities calling my name and I'd love to keep working for Deep Space Nine but as a guest star, I will come back anytime I have a moment and I will be on the show. And Rick Berman was like, no, it's Star Trek or nothing. And she's like, yeah, but here's the thing. I really want to come back. Like, I don't want to be like, this is it. I love this show and I'd love to come back. I just need to seek other opportunities. And supposedly Rick Berman was like, no, you will be on Star Trek or you will not be on Star Trek at all. Full time or no time. And apparently sent a string of people to say, you know, if you quit Star Trek, your life will be ruined, your career will be over, you know, life will be ruined, your career will be over. And she just had strings and strings of people coming into her office and into her trailer saying, you can't quit Star Trek, if you do, your life will be over. And she's like, you know, all this harassment telling her her life would be over um, if, um, if she quit Star Trek. And even though they could have had her on as a guest star if they really chose to, Rick Berman didn't want it. So they, they wrote her off. And the worst part was, apparently... Like, the at the moment where Jadzia gets shot and she falls backwards, she has to wear this really clunky harness. And, you know, to, for the effect of her being lifted backwards. 
And apparently she found out from the VR people, they didn't need the clunky harness they actually used because 90% of it was covered with special effects anyway. So you didn't even see 90% of that harness they suppo that Rick Berman supposedly said was required for the shot. So she goes, I'm 100% convinced to this day the only reason I had to wear that clunky harness was his, it was his way of giving me one final punch to the gut before I got off the set. Rick Berman was a piece of work. I, I, and the thing is, I used to think, no, 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 I'm sure that's not, that's just people being haters. No, now that he's off, now that, now that a lot of the actors have retired from Star Trek and stuff, a lot more is coming out. Like, like supposedly Seven of Nine got a lot, um, Jerry Ryan got a lot of hate from the people on the set. And apparently a lot of that was because she wasn't buying Rick Berman's crap. Um, and some of the people that were there were loyal to Rick Berman only because they're like, this is the show. We need to get on with the show. Let's make the show. Um, don't, you know, again, is he a nice guy? No, but the show needs to go on, that sort of a thing. And Kate Mulgrew, who played um, Captain Janeway, sided with 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 um, Berman only in so much as to say, He's the producer. We have to do what he says. He's the head. He's the he's the captain of the ship. Uh, the captain of the ship, so to speak. And it caused a lot of friction between her and Jerry Ryan to start with, because, you know, she was only siding with Rick Berman because he was the head, and you know you don't argue with the head of the show. You know he's the guy that makes the show. But Jerry Ryan's like, I'm not buying this because again, she was the, he was the one that wrote off on that really uncomfortable seven oh nine costume. And she hated it. Oh my gosh. And she fought every inch of the way to get something a little bit more comfortable. Um, but yeah, to now Jerry, now Kate Mogu was like, that was a huge mistake. I should never have said it with Berman against people that cried out about him because it's more and more is coming to light. She goes, yeah, I was trying to be, you know, hey, he's he's the head of everything, you know, try to get along. And she says, she says I wish I'd never done that because he doesn't deserve that kind of loyalty, basically. And after I heard what he did about Terry Farrell, that really made me angry because I loved, um, I loved John Zia. Um, and to hear that basically she had to quit the show because he wouldn't have her any other way except full time. And yeah, that's just garbage. That's just absolute garbage. But Vic Fontaine, to get back to what you were saying there, uh, Merton Twitch. Yeah. Um, about Vic Fontaine though, um, <clears throat> I, I'm going to say one thing. If you don't know this, he has, I wouldn't say he has an album, but um, he the, the guy that plays him, I can't, I'm trying to think of his name. It's not Bobby Darren. Come on, Jay. What is his name? The guy that plays him recorded a Sinatra-esque album. And I own it. So if that doesn't tell you how I stand up, I know a lot of the fan base hates Vic Fontaine. He's like, he's just a hologram. He's a secondary character. He's so dumb. I don't know why he exists. He's so lame. Get off the bridge if you're going to be like that. Seriously, go away. I like Vic Fontaine. He had a purpose. Did he feel a little bit like a holographic bartender? Yes, he did. Was he necessary? No. Was he fun? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was fun. So, again, get off my ship. If you're, going to be, if you're going to complain about Vic Fontaine, get off my ship. You don't need to be on my ship. <laughs> James Darren. Thank you. I knew it was something to do with Darren. Thank you so much, Mern. Tuvok and Spock are iconic. I just want to put that out there. Very true. And did you know that um, Tim Russ was very, very anxious about his performance of Tuvok? Because he says, we have never had a pure Vulcan on the show. Spock was half Vulcan. And even though he favored his Vulcan side, he was not fully Vulcan. I have to play fully Vulcan. And I don't know how to do it. Vic is such a great help for Worf and Odo and yeah, Odo and Worf. His way, still one of the best episodes of Star Trek of all time. I can't watch that episode though. It does give me the feels though. Um, his way. What's this one? R24? Yeah, that's it. Is it gonna work on that? Yeah, it's gonna work on that. Because that was that was me before I met my wife was um Odo with Kira. <laughs> like I didn't understand relationships and I felt like Odo. <laughs> I still like he's like and when Vic tells him, I just want you to have fun. And then Odo goes, what does what does having fun have to do with being with Kira? And Vic goes, I'm pretending you didn't say that. I'm pretending that I'm pretending not to hear the part where you just said what part of being with my, the girl I'm interested in is fun. <laughs> like it, it's so bad. Like, oof, Odo, you've got a lot to learn, my brother. You've got a lot to learn, my friend. <laughs> I'll never forget. I'll pretend I didn't hear that. I'll pretend I didn't hear the part where you just said what, what what's having a girlfriend do with being fun. That was so great, though. 
They just played, there's a TV network, I don't know if you're familiar with it, it may not be everywhere, called Heroes and Icons, and they just played Duet, which is one of the greatest things on television ever to have been made, ever. Fight me if you don't believe so. And they just played it, and I'm like, I cry every time I watch that. Sub bro said, Doc, it's a groove on with a ghost. No, no, Matt, no. Sub bro says where Doc gets it on with a candle, okay? Let's get it right, okay? <laughs> they just showed that, I, told, I showed Arlene, I was like, you got to watch this goofy episode. Doc Crusher is going to get horny over a candle. I promise you this happens. And she watches, she goes, this is really bonkers. <laughs> I'm like, right? Doc Crusher's getting it on with a candle. You light up my life. That was a bad time to use that song, wasn't it? I regret my decision. That was actually pretty funny. I'm not going to lie. But anyway, <laughs> Sub Rosa, man, that stink pile. I want to say that's probably a, that's probably a uh, Brian and Braga joint. Brian and Braga, man. <laughs> that man, am I right? Hey, let's put 40 in imagery in Star Trek. And let's just keep putting 40 in imagery in Star Trek. Hey, are you not tired of 40 in imagery yet? Here's more 40 in imagery. Hope you enjoy 40 in imagery. It was like Pimp My Ride 40 in imagery edition. And let's also remember the other gift he gave us. <laughs> Picard, and, Picard and Crusher. Don't even start with me, Picard and Crusher. Oh my gosh. That should have been a thing. I mean, it technically was a thing. They did establish in all good things that they did kind of hook up. Now, did that actually play out because it was, a, it was a possible future timeline? I don't know. But there was definitely chemistry from like... And the thing is, you might say, it didn't really happen. Okay, we just watched The Naked Now, which was on recently. And in The Naked Now, she was coming on to Captain Picard. Granted, she was under the influence of a thing that made her practically drunk. Granted, I get that. But here's the thing. Here's the thing. She still came under Captain Picard, and then seven years later, it's still happening. It's still a thing. You cannot tell me if that was just a drunk thing. If it was just a drunk thing, it would have been gone or we're done. It wasn't. Because the one where they start reading each other's minds, what happens? She's like, I never knew you felt that way about me. And she and he's like, well, with Jack's death and everything going with Jack, he was my best friend. I was going to, you know move it on my man's girl there was no way and I'm like oh shoot that's a thing and the thing is again I say you can't just say well that just happened that one episode uh uh it was established in two episodes in two episodes in it was established that, that there was a there was there was chemistry there two episodes in and again did they explore it fully no but there's a couple times where I think Picard gets a woman and what what happens I think it was with the the um the archaeologist Vash and and Crusher's like what happened there? Who's this woman? Oh okay, what happened here? You got all of the scent that some woman was all up in Captain <laughs> Picard's Rice Krispies. I don't know what I was gonna say there, um, but it's just, it's just like she gets jealous. I think a few times too. Um, I would still say Wesley might be his son. No, 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 sir. You get out of the chat with that right now. No. No. I'll do a paternity test right now. I'll get it. I will get. I will prove the provenance of Jack Crusher. I will prove that. I will get in a time show time machine to prove that Wesley is Jack Crusher's child. Do not start with me with that. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what? You know, that was just a depiction of a book from the 1800s. Probably so, Matt. I wouldn't be surprised. Um, once we still my Netflix, my was always favorite my favorite for not my favorite not lying, Mern, really. <laughs> there was some cool things that Wesley did though. All kidding aside, all shut up Wesley jokes aside, Wesley did do some cool things. Remember the traveler, <laughs> the chicken, <laughs> the fish, the trout, and the marlin. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know if you've all seen the Social Network, but there's a moment when <laughs> when. <laughs> Andrew Garfield plays um, Eduardo Severin, who's the finan chief financial officer of Facebook. I mean, he's just this college kid that gave $1,000 to mm, Matt Zuckerberg when he was in college as well to build the servers to build the original run of Facebook. And he's like, don't you understand the trout and the marlin? <laughs> Which was a discussion they had earlier about something totally different. And it's like, why would you bring up the trout and the marlin right now? <laughs> this has nothing to do with anything. But um, anyway... Wesley Crusher, they established him as kind of like that shadow character. He's like, 
we just watched that episode too. They just showed the episode with the traveler. And he's like, Wesley, the boy, the boy. And I got ticked. This is the first time I've actually been ticked on behalf for Wesley. Because Riker's like, the boy said. And Wesley goes, I have a name. I'm Wesley. And I was like, oh, shoot. It was either him or his mom. And I was like, you're dang right, Riker. He's not the boy. He is Wesley or you can even say Master Crusher technically, but I'd, I'd prefer not to. But, you know, you can say, you know, Wesley Crusher, Wesley, not, not the boy. You mean there's a thousand people on Enterprise and not another one is a boy? Bull. There's plenty of kids on an Enterprise. You don't say the boy just because he's the only one there. I love how we're talking about Star Trek while you're drawing Star Wars. I don't care. <laughs> I'll cross-pollinate all day. My, my, my stinger's not only in one flower. Ooh, that sounds bad. Let's so retake that one back. <laughs> Let's take that back. <laughs> my my heart is not in one fandom. <laughs> there we go. Ooh. Picard's pillow talk. We get Crusher. Crusher once a grin and says engage. Oh my god. <laughs> turn off this turn off turn the screws the name of the book. Okay. Wesley was sick with the traveler. Everyone is compared. Everyone's a bit everyone's a bit <laughs> compared to Riker. Yeah, I know. There's so many jokes about, there's so many, if you guys follow any Star Trek groups, oh my gosh, the number of Riker memes, it'd be like, it'd be like, oh, I'm feeling lonely tonight, Riker's entered the chat. <laughs> like, you ain't playing, man. I always think it's funny, though, in the episode The Game, that's the one that has Ashley Judd featured very prominently. Now that's the only episode of Star Trek, but you know, it's the one she's featured prominently in. Who brings the game to the Enterprise? That's right, Horny Riker. His little butt was busy going on, he was all up in some alien culture's business. And what do they do? They're like, here, have this game because you're vulnerable because you're horny. Come on, Riker, take this game to your ship. We'll take over your entire ship. And you know what? It almost worked. But who stomped him? Wesley and Ashley Judd. Boom. Okay, I'm getting really passionate. <laughs> I'm not being befitting of, of a Debbie Cat cozy stream. I'm not being befitting at all. I'm failing tonight. No comfy cozy stream. That's okay. I don't want to take that from Debbie. I like her comfy cozy streams, but that's her thing. I'll do I'll do comfy cozy streams. I've seen other people do them. So it's not like it's she holds the market on comfy cozy streams. But I do like that she does them. But sometimes it gets pretty bonkers up in here, I'm not gonna lie. Picard has a soft spot for Wesley. Correct me if I'm wrong. He does, though. He does. Everyone is a big bomb compared to Riker a boy. That's true. That's true. That epic Atlaskan beard, though, kind of makes everybody a little bit more boyish, don't it? But all kidding aside, though, um, there's a deep crease there in the child's eye. What's his name again? Grogu. I remember when I, I never, I'd never heard the, the name before, and I saw an article that said, Baby Yoda's name is finally revealed, and fans aren't having it. <laughs> I was like, how bad is it? Um, ma the cro master of the crotch shit. Ever notice how he straddles a chair? I would do it right now, except my, I, I'm streaming this right now, and I, I can't do it. Like, I can't do it because I'm not mad enough. But yeah, he does. It's at the Picard Maneuver. Tug at the bottom of your shirt down. They called it the Picard Maneuver because um, Patrick Stewart, because the shirts were uncomfortable at first. They were uncomfortable. So they, um, they he would tug on the shirt to kind of hold it down because it was like this turtleneck thing. So they called it the, the Picard Maneuver. But the thing is, even when the shirt changed, they still kept up doing it. And they called it the Picard Maneuver, which is where you tug at the bottom of your tunic to bring it down more. I love that though, that they call it the Picard movie, but that's kind of cool though. Yeah, baby. I need a little bit yellow, don't I? No, no, gray, 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 gray. Oh, this one, this one works. Wait, wait, maybe yes, maybe no, no yes. We're gonna use it anyway. But I love how they called it the Picard mover. Tagging down the bottom of the tunic to pull it down. With one stiff, starchy pull, just tug. There you go. Card maneuver. Man, I used to do that all the time at work, though. I do the card maneuver. And I'd be like, hey, no one knows what I'm doing right now, but it's the card maneuver. You all are lame because you don't understand. I wouldn't actually use that voice, although I wished I had. Watching the, watching, I'm watching voice with the stream. Have you seen Let It Snow? But, oh, yes, make it so. <laughs> I love how there's like an episode part where, where Wesley comes on and he's like, shut up, Wesley, and stops the whole proceedings. Have you seen the one of, um, the rap one of, I just finished watching The Royale. That's a good one, too. I love how, poor Data, he's just trying to understand things. He just flips through the book and he reads the whole book of The, of the Royale. And he's like, 
I've read every page of this book and I understand how this is supposed to end. Yeah, of course you did, Data, because we all love you. We know you did that. I just watched I watched two videos too recently. Uh, one, one, one quite unrecently. It was a little while back. One of all the times where Worf has disagreed with, he'll be like, I suggest we move to full to photon torpedoes. Like, negative. We don't need that, yeah. And there's like a whole video of all of Worf's ideas being shot down. And you're like, poor Worf, though. He'll be like, recommend we move to full tactical alert. Picard, not yet. And you're like, oh, nobody listens to Worf. Dang it. But there's another funny one of... <laughs> All the times data is shut down, all the times he's doing calculations, like it, all the times he's doing the calculations, and it'll be he'll say, "We'll arrive in in three days, four hours, two two minutes, six enough data." All the times he's shut down, trying to do his extra verbiage, um, it's hilarious. You feel bad for data, like, oh man, data, can you just complete a sentence, even if it's not necessary? Just let the man complete a sentence, please. There's another funny one though, that of Picard. Yeah, all the cast is saying different words of the song, exactly. It makes it it makes it so it was such a great video. Data though. Yeah, I'm talking about data. Data was my childhood hero. He was. I'm like, he doesn't curse. He's super helpful, strong, kind, polite. Couldn't do anything wrong unless somebody uh, the only times data did anything wrong was with because his program malfunctioned or somebody took control of him. I mean Chaotic oh wait, was it more morally good? Is that what it's called? I mean, I think he's the morally good, right? I mean, morally neutral. No, not neutral. Mor morally good, what do they call it? The the alignment. I don't even know because I don't play D&D. Unfortunately, never played. Um, Tasha Yar didn't really like her. Is it just me? I did kind of like her. Like, the second run through, I think I think it's because... I think it's because Tasha came in during the worst season. He did almost shoot his kidnapper. What are you talking about? I, I missed out on that. <laughs> but um screw that over there but um there's an I want to tell you about something funny too there is a rather funny um oh come on camera catch up with me there's a rather funny another video oh oh yeah 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 right sorry you're talking about data data yeah you're talking about the in the all the toys or the most toys, the most toys. You're talking about that episode. You're right. I forgot about that. You're right. That's the one time Data actually does do something. Because but the thing is, it was kind of a mercy killing. Because that dude was like, um, he was just collecting all these people, all these beings and things. He was collecting them and holding them against their will. And he had these devices that would make people do, like he would torture them if they didn't do what he said them, told them to do. You're right, though. He did kind of. I think I don't remember if he killed him or if he just shot him. He did. Just, he did shoot him though. You're quite correct. All right. She was all right. I noticed going back and watching together, I noticed Data smiles a lot in the episodes. <laughs> he was fully functional and trained in many, numerous, multiple techniques. Arlene, we, watched, we just watched that because it was naked now. And we just watched it. Arlene goes, does that mean? I said, yeah, they're going to do it. <laughs> she was like, what? He's a robot. I'm like, he's got all his parts. Fully upgraded. And I think it's funny because they, it was one of the worst episodes, let's be honest. The Naked Now is kind of a corny as crap episode. But the thing is, I will say this about the writing staff. They stuck to their guns. And actually, it was one of the best parts. The best thing to come out of that episode was the fact that they, even though it was weird and stupid and awkward, I guess, in a way, it also established that they had a, an understanding. You know what I mean? Like, they always understood that it happened. And they never, they never thought less about each other. They never thought any differently about each other. They just were like... It's friend time, and it never changed anything about their friendship. It gave them a deeper understanding of each other, but it was never treated like, you know, oh, I can't be together, or, you know, we should date. It was never, as awkward as it was, it never killed their friendship. And I think that's a beautiful thing that, you know, they both realized, hey, wait a second, we didn't, this was not something we would have normally have done, but, you know, at the same time, we've hit that, we, we've reached that, and, but we're not, there's no reason we should stop being friends. Like, I don't think they, I don't know might be different opinions i just always thought that like once that happened it was like okay that was awkward but you know we're still friends and that's not going away and kind of like the George, kind of like elaine and, and jerry on seinfeld you know like even though you know they were once boyfriend girlfriend they still remain friends and they're not gonna let the their ex life normally interfere with their friendship which is kind of a really special dynamic because a lot of times it winds up being awkward. They kind of did it with New Girl too. Like, 
Um, Nick and uh, Jess, after their dating, they kind of went back to more of a platonic friendship. But you can still see the affection was still there from the episode Genesis. Oh, let's see. Six cats in Obana. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I'm missing a bunch. Y'all are chatty tonight. Why is my mouse pointer not moving? Is my camera working? Yes, it is. That's going to be awkward on my speed run. Oh, the true champion Spot. <laughs> Spot was portrayed by seven different cats. And Monster was the most common. Come on. Wow. There we go. Well, six cats and one iguana. True, true Genesis. Good play. Good play on that one. I was like, an iguana? You're right. It was an iguana, technically, because Spot changed into an iguana thanks to the episode Genesis. Well played on that reference. You're over here being clever like, <laughs> Genesis, it was actually an iguana. And you're right, though. It really was an iguana. Oh, yeah, that's a good one. That's a good color. We're going to do that real quick. Yeah, but there's, you're absolutely right. Iguan it was an iguana in Genesis when Barclay's proto-evolutionary, whatever it was called, when it was linking on gen genetic markers that it shouldn't have linked on to and started making the crew turn into other, other things. And Barclay's like, a disease is named after me. Yes. And you're like, dude, that's not how you want to go out. It's like there's an there's a there's a uh, there's a show on YouTube called Animeme, and there's one that says, "I want the good news or the bad news?" says the doctor. The patient says, "The good news, of course." The doctor says, "There's going to be a disease named after you." <laughs> the guy goes, "Oh dang!" Only he doesn't say dang, <laughs> but I'm trying to keep it PG tonight, guys. Uh, <laughs> my dad's favorite is Enterprise with Archer. You see. I made that a new girl. That's okay. Oh, did I spoil it? I'm so sorry, Matt. I am so, so sorry if I just did a spoiler. My bad. It, it's not that far into the show, I might add. So if I spoiled something, trust me, you're not that far from it. I promise you, you're not that far from it. But I'm sorry. I didn't mean to spoil it, man. I, I forgot you were watching it. Plus, I didn't know you weren't that far along. I am so sorry. This is supposed to be a spoiler-free area. <laughs> Jason, jar. That's a new, that's a new girl joke. <laughs> Enterprise is Archer. My dog's name is Tucker, not because of Enterprise. It was a dog we adopted that had the name already. And I decided that it was Tucker because of Tucker on Enterprise. <laughs> Trip Tucker. <laughs> Still, there's a commercial for heroes and icons. And they're like, Vulcans do not eat with their hands. <laughs> and then Tucker goes, Must be like a heck of a time with spare ribs, huh? <laughs> Holy Tucker, man. <laughs> and they just, you know, these Vulcans are trying to tear him down by making Tucker feel like a, a barbarian for eating with his hands. And he's like, <laughs> and they're like, and I think it was to Paula, she says, Vulcans do not eat with their hands. And then Trip goes, man, must be a heck of a time with spare ribs, huh? <laughs> he didn't let anything phase him, man. There was no, Tucker was like, he, he made no apologies, man. Oh my gosh. Trip Tucker. Trip Tucker, but um, yeah, our dog came already pre-named because it was a, it was a, I want to say it was a rescue. It was basically somebody couldn't keep the do keep a dog, and we were looking for another one anyway. And um, so they were like, we don't want to give him up to a shelter because that's just no, we don't want to do that to our Tucker. And we're like, uh, here, give him here. So we adopted Tucker from the owners because we know the owners. So we know well, she was, it was, it was we knew the owners, uh, owner's sister. And we're like, well, we wanted a dog anyway, so Tucker can come live with us. And he's our he's our little frat boy. He's really a, a handful. But anyway, there was speaking of Star Trek ne um, Next Generation, Archer's face was so funny. Um, Trip and Reed in the shuttle drinking whiskey. Yeah, there was some good moments on that show. Um, my favorite one um, is A Night in Sick Bay, because here's <laughs> it's a stupid little funny one off episode of Archer just being like. I'm going to stay in sick because my dog got sick because these idiots wouldn't tell me about what was on, this, on the planet. And to Paul brings up a good point. Did you really need to bring your dog on this trip? Like, you could have jeopardized relationships with an alien planet just because your dog wanted to go for a walk. And she brings up a valid point. And so Archer has to kind of live with that. He's like, you know, she's kind of right. But at the same time, it's a man and his dog. You know, and uh, Porthos is a cute little dog. Let's not, let's, let's not ignore that fact either. Okay. So anyway... Um, going back to next gen, um, I've always wanted to name an animal Frodo after the one and only. True, that's a good point. Um, there was one thing I, I don't think you guys have seen, and you should see, 
There was one, there's a rap song made up of clips of the show. And I don't forget what, I think it's called Picard Rap. And it's, it's clean, I can't remember anything bad in it. But it's funny, because it's like, Captain Jean-Luc Picard of the USS Enterprise. Blah, 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 make it so. It's so funny. And it's worth it because it's got some of the best speeches in it from Next Gen, from, um, Next Gen that have been you know, rearranged. The, 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 the sound has been distorted so that it matches with the beat. But it's pretty much the exact dialogue from the from the episode it was lifted from. But it's just so funny because the, like the main part is Captain Jean Luc Picard of the USS Enterprise. It's worth looking up. I promise you. If you liked, if you like, let make it so. Look up Picard rap, and you'll know it's the right one because, like it says, that's what it, it does. It's like I'm Captain Jean Luc Picard of the USS Enterprise, and then the beat drops, and he's like Captain Jean Luc Picard of the USS Enterprise, and it's all clips of from this from the show, and. It uses the, you know, it's every offers moral obligation to for the, for the truth to expose the truth and whatever that speech is. And he does the speech with the um, um, that Shaw compared to a summer's day when he's trying to woo, get back um, tr- uh, Luxana Troy from whoever kidnapped her, which I think was a Ferengi. Um, so that speech is in there fully. Then there's the um, the speech from uh, the one with they f- fractured time, and they came back to the Romulan ship was all fractured and. Picard was talking about what the one seminar is like he just kept talking and talking and one incredibly long sentence it was clearly quite hypnotic and they used that speech and sampled bits of that in the middle part of it it's pretty funny oh you did find it if it's the right one please tell me it's the right one but it's hilarious because there's a lot of the speeches are lifted from that because there's a lot of, it's a very long section like there's a lot of, you'll hear a lot of Captain Jean-Luc Picard and it loops around a couple times but then there's bigger chunks that are like it has a structure to it. It's almost, I think, a Rondo structure. Rondo is where you do you state something, you state something different, you state the first thing again, you state something completely different, you state the first thing again. So a Rondo is basically, in musical form, you state one thing, you state something different that contrasts it, you state something, that, you keep coming back to the original thing. So you'll be like, for, you'll be thing one, something different, thing one, something different again, thing one, something different again, thing one. That's a Rondo. Some of them bring back the other parts too, but a Rondo is usually described by a part that keeps coming back as it is. That's what distinguishes a rondo. Because it, it keeps coming back and it's a the piece the piece that you start off with is the piece that keeps coming back as a reminder. Oh guess what? It's back. Oh guess what? It's back again. Hey, guess what? Remember that first thing? It's back a third time. And that's how rondos work. So I think they use that Captain Jean-Luc Picard part as the rondo. Because it keeps coming back. And that's one of the things that makes it longer because it keeps coming back to that same part but it's worth it i think i i remember watching it laughing it oh it's just called the picard video okay <laughs> i couldn't remember if it was picard rap or picard video or what have you wow it's almost 11 o'clock and i haven't got much done on grogu i mean i've got a lot done on his face but i gotta figure out what i'm gonna do with the robes i don't know if i got the exact colors and i think i've kind of agreed that i'm not gonna worry about the exact colors I'm not going to worry about it too much. The Picard video. I'm going to see if I missed anything in chat, but it's hilarious, though. It's worth it. What about trouble they had to go to make, through, to make pets make any noise during episodes? Probably a ton. There was one episode um, where they had, like, I want to say, um, yeah, I'm froze again. There we go. There we go. Dropping frames like a tramp. I dropped 10,000 frames, which is about 5%. Because my computer's being a butt. I might have to quit um, something. I'm going to clear that, close that off, and see if that helps. It might help. I'm trying to see if there's anything unnecessary running and literally have nothing unnecessary that's not running. I need to get this Grogu's um, the robe. It matches the kind of the carriage colors, but... I don't want to bring the carriage colors in there. I'm going to see if I have any other warm colors that might work out. It's not looking good. <laughs> it's not looking good. Okay, I need a little bit of warmth in the browns. Let's try hazelnut E20. This is E23, isn't it? E23? Well, that's the one that's busted. Poop! One of these, I need to get new. I need to get either a new marker or E13. Yeah, E13. Those will work.
Well, thank you. Thank you, Mern. I'm, I'm just a lot longer in the tooth on this drone than I intended to be. It's taking way longer than I'd hoped. Really was hoping to be done with a lot, lot more, but <laughs> currently I'm like, oh, this stinks. But again, I'm gonna take all the VODs and melt them down into one giant speed drawing, which will be, which will be good. Because speed drawings are popular. No, speed drawings are, are popular. But that's not why I'm doing it. That's what encouraged me to finally actually do one. I'm like, I should do tons of speed drawings because I've always wanted to. Um, and I haven't just because I've been lazy because it takes a lot of commitment to do this because I have to literally have an entire area set up and just work on this and nothing else and not move anything. Um, so I can't work on it outside of the draw. Um, so again, it's a lot of commitment to getting it done, which I wasn't sure if I was up for doing that kind of level of commitment. To be honest, it's a lot. I can't move the cameras. I can't move the drawing between sessions. It's a lot because it's a lot of work, a lot of commitment, a lot of a lot of um, commitment on my part, which sounds really like, oh, I know I'm committing a lot. <laughs> you know. What'd you do a speed drawing of? Crap, this is drawing out. Well, that's right, this was drawing out and I didn't know where the refill was and I was gonna look for it while I was on the last stream. I'll have to make a note. Look for, oh, you know what you do? Put on my phone, hold on. I spent five minutes on the stream, the streamer's fan art. <laughs> that's a, that is a literally, a, it's a time drawing, too. Um, let's see. I can erase that. How do, you, how do you delete a note like that? Delete. Delete that. Add a new one. Okay, no, 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 not that. Dumb, dumb. New, new note. Did I have a new note? Okay, here we go. Find. W1 refill. Repair. It was E23, wasn't it? Yeah, it's E23. Here's one. I think I've got the the thing for it. If not, I'll have to buy a new one because it's just absolute crap. I turned out okay. I turned out decent. I'll work on it harder on the next. On the next what? On the next drawing. You mean you'll work to improve? Here's the thing though. Like when it comes to working on drawings to improve always strive to improve and you will improve like i think that's something a lot of folks forget about they think oh man my, my last drawing was such garbage i don't know if i'm happy with it the thing is even if it's absolutely bad <laughs> which i'm sure it's not guys your drawings i'm sure are not are that bad the thing is even if they were bad even if they were terrible and horrible and just like ugh, never look at them again if you take the time the next time to do much better the next time in spite of yourself in spite of like oh i'm no good at this i should quit even if you have those feelings, here's the thing. The very next drawing you do, if you strive to improve, you will improve. It may not be a lot, but it might be it might be a lot. It might not be very much at all. But the point is, if you just make a point to just try to do your best and improve every drawing you do, you will, in spite of yourself, improve. It will happen. I was, yeah, it's true. <laughs> it's true. You just you just keep going. It's true. It's true what you said, Mer. You do have to keep just keep going. Don't worry about it. I mean, concern yourself about improving yourself, but don't don't say, oh, I, this drawing sucked, I gotta give up on it. No. I, I know a lot of people say, oh, I can't draw, I can't draw, I can't draw. Well, I would only say that would I would agree with you only if you didn't know how to write. Because every time you write, you're drawing pictograms that we all know and understand. So you can successfully draw, oh, you wouldn't be able to write. The problem is being able to draw more sophisticated than just drawing letters. That takes some time, but you know, that's practice. And a lot of it's mechanical, and a lot of it's unlearning what you think you're seeing. That's a chunk of it, honestly. Because we think we see things and we don't really see, we're not really seeing them the way we think we actually see them. That is true, because like we think we see, oh, well, most people that draw faces will draw faces two thirds the size of the, like the, uh, the eyes, like, for a person's eyes to mouth, uh, eyes to chin, they'll draw that two thirds of the of the tar of the whole head. Now I'm not talking about Baby Yoda. I'm just using Baby Yoda because I'm not switching my camera. But they'll use it as a um, 
as a, as a marker, they'll draw two thirds of the head, which is incorrect. You, the, a person's head is not two thirds away from their eyes down to their chin. Their eyes are about halfway down. But the thing is in our brain, why do we do that though? Because our brains know that eyes and mouth and nose is how we recognize people. We don't recognize people by their foreheads. So our brains put significantly more importance on, um, on, um, eyes and, and, uh, and noses and mouths. Cause that's where we, we place our recognition. That's where our brains recognize faces. So when we draw, we often draw the, the we all, we try, we try, and this is why, you know, we try to learn proportion because again, your brain's trying to sabotage you. It's like, well, the, the, the most important part of all this is your, your, you know, from the, from the eyes down. So you put that bigger and you draw the five head, like a third head instead of a half a head, which is exactly what it should be. Let me see here. Let me see. Let me see. You, you're saying you're spitting some wisdom here. I think we're, where's my pointer? I lost it again. Here we go. Yep, exactly right. I'm seeing it. I was never any good at art when I started. Then a year later, I started drawing so that much better that I didn't draw through the whole year at all. I say, I draw and that's it. Ha. When people tell me that they can't draw, I ask them, can you draw a stick man? They say, yes. And I say, well, it's still a drawing, so therefore you can draw. Exactly. People sell themselves short because they don't. their drawings aren't where they want them to be yet. But you know what? The funny part is that happens to all of us. All of us don't start off where we want to be. And all of us are still growing to be where we want to be. That's called just working on it. And you're allowed to keep working on it for the rest of your life. And you will get better if you keep working on it. You, as long as you don't quit. As long as you don't go, eh, I'll never be any better. That's when you stop growing. If you honestly make every effort to improve, the improvement will happen in spite of yourself. And I've watched it happen in my life. Like, I'm like, I hit a wall, I hit a plateau, and I'm like, I'm never going anywhere further beyond this. And I did. I got where I wanted to be and thought I'd plateaued and would never reach. Okay, that's still a drawing, so therefore you can draw. Besides drawings and standards of what you think, I type quite a lot. No, it's okay. <laughs> I like having more to talk about, though. So, you know, please feel free to share away. Um, you know, it's not about... I'm here to do the speed drawing, but again, this will be sped up. So even if things are like, oh my gosh, why is that so slow? Don't worry about it, because I'm not worried about it. It's going to be um, sped up anyway. So and that line, you're not going to see anyway when I'm done with this. So I'm not worried about leaving that pencil line in there too much. I was trying to figure out what I was going to do, and I went all over the place, like, oh, roo, 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 roo. my hand was all over the place, man. I thought there was a um, mouse pointer on the screen. It's not. It's There's, there's a center, mo mo center mark. I'm trying to get it off the screen. There we go. Perfect. It was right in the middle of my reference. Now, part of me is like, oh, I don't really have to draw this really in detail. I can just sketch it in. I'm like, no. If I draw it, just sketch it in, it will, it won't look, it'll look like I just gave up on the drawing and didn't care to finish it. Because there's sometimes, you just have, you do have to know kind of where to finish it, but sometimes if you don't, if you just sketch it in, people would be like, oh, you didn't mean to finish that, you just were lazy. And you're like, no, it was an artistic decision, but thanks for making me feel lazy. I guess I'll fill it in next time. <laughs> See, I, a, an artistic decision is not a bad one unless you can't support it, honestly. If you can't reasonably support it, then you're like, but why though? Because I'll see drawings like that all the time. And this, this is one thing that came up in one of our drawing, draw, a drawing group I used to be a member of. It used to be because I, I haven't had time to keep up with it. And they'll talk about like people will draw bad proportions and say, that's just my style. Uh, no, that's just bad proportion. You're just trying to pass it off as style. <laughs> I mean, there are, and, and to be fair, this is one discussion that always comes up. Hey, you know, to be fair, there actually is a group called Bad Painting that actually is making art to look intentionally like it was made by a child. But you know what? And you say, yeah, it exists, but here's the thing. Um, I actually struggle to draw right with the references. I have, a, I have to draw freehanded without looking, otherwise it comes up quite blocky. Sometimes you second guess yourself. I, I say you as in me, because I do that. I second guess what I'm drawing, and I start drawing quite bulky. So I have to start thinking about, okay, make it less bulky. I love popping into small streams. None of my friends are on it this time, so I talk to streamers. That's <laughs> nothing wrong with that. I mean, especially with the pandemic going on, it doesn't hurt to make new, new friends. I mean, you know, I mean, just go for it. I mean, that's what I was doing. I mean, I'm kind of the, I, I kind of get along better with people online. I'm not really good with in-person interaction. I'm getting better though. I really am getting better. Um, so to be able to just 
chat with folks like Matt and you and uh, Sarah and folks online really helps me, you know, a lot. In fact, some people meet me online and they meet me in person like, wow, you seem like a totally different person. I'm like, I told you, I told you I'm more gregarious when I'm online. One of my cosplay friends, that was very much true. She was like, I never would have known you're so shy in real life. I'm like, because I am. I'll talk a big game <laughs> over the internet. Nothing bad. I'll just be like, you know, talk, talk, chat, 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 chat. I see you like, hey, how's it going? Hey, you, you okay? Doing good? Okay. Like, I'll be so shy in real life. And it's just the way I am. I, 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 it is changing. I'm getting much more gregarious in real life. Much more open. Although you put me in a situation I'm not comfortable with. I think this is true with a lot of folks there. I will be like, um, hey, how's it going? <laughs> All of a sudden I start retreating in my, my little box. Little box boy. Oh, there's orange behind his head. Oh, no. I'm going to fill that in real quick. What color did I use to start with? I don't even remember. And we got the VOD handy. We can back it up and watch. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to start off with this color here. And I think it starts there. I still wonder if this is supposed to be based on the gymnopie number one from Eric Satie. There's a middle part of it that sounds exactly like that sequence of chords. It's the middle part only. It's almost like he was like, you know what? I don't rip off. I don't want to rip off the entire composition. So let me just copy the end, that middle section of it, and go from there. <laughs> Dude, can I copy your work? Sure, man. But just change a few things so nobody knows that we did it. So you know who knows you copy off of me. Oh, is there any streamers? I'm quite creative at my own disbelief. So when I'm I'm limited to a reference, I feel like I'm get more bored. I'm usually I'm naturally a huge person to chant chat in person or online, but the virus has got me very shy. Ah, uh, I can feel that though. Now I'll say this though, um, for me I feel like I feel like I'm the opposite. I feel like I, I need a reference to draw from, and even though I, I feel like my work is really beautiful with reference, I also feel like I can always sometimes feel like a, like a glorified copier. I feel like I can make any, I can draw anything really if I put my mind to it. So like great, so I can literally just make myself a giant copying machine. Great, that just doesn't feel good. <laughs> and I know a lot of my friends will tell me, no, no, that's not true, that's not true. But that's the first thing I feel like I feel like just a glorified copying machine. I'm like. But what did I add to this drawing, though? I just drew the, the thing I saw in front of me. Big whoopty, you know? And I don't feel like I've done anything major or, or special. I know I've got technical skill. I can see that. I, I mean, I've matured enough as an artist. I'm not trying to be boastful. I hope I don't sound boastful or come off as boastful. But I know what I'm capable of. But I'm also like, sometimes I see it and I'm like, yeah, but I'm just copying what I'm seeing in front of me. That's nothing special. So I don't, oftentimes I feel like it's not good enough, you know? So I try to take some artistic license where I can just so I can remind myself that I'm still in control. I don't have to blindly copy the photograph in front of me. It's still a struggle, though. I'm not going to lie. There we go. Boink. All right, there's the colorless blender. Let me colorless blend this back in this way. No, it goes the other way, too. Okay. I got shot down. My friend boosted me, boasted ahead of me with her art. I'm naturally here. Okay, let's see. Could, could got so shot down when my friend boosted me ahead of me in art. Got me. She got so much better than me. When I used to be better at art. Uh, it really got my spirit down until I realized she just traced it. <laughs> well, here's the thing. Like this is one thing that's helped me a lot. In my my journey too. Not to be jealous of other people's success. Um. And even if I'm proud of somebody's success, I can be proud of my friend's success and jealous of it at the same time. And one of my friends kind of would do something like that. Like, I get really jealous. I see some of my friends who are not artists, or artists in different capacities than mine, reach a lot of success. And it got me very jealous a lot. And I've learned to not do that. It's been a struggle because I realize I have to value myself enough that the journey, especially when it comes to art, everyone's journey is different. Like, some art catches on better than others. Like, I'll tell you one of the f most amazing things that ever happened to me was at a con one time. At a table, and this woman comes up to me and she tells me my entire aesthetic. She goes, I love what you draw. You draw beautiful women, but you don't make them look like, you know, you, you don't make them look cheap or nasty. They're, they're always dignified. Even if a woman looks sexy, she's never 
undignified. She's never in a bad pose. She's never in, you know, in a bad... Uh, she doesn't look bad. She never looks cheap. She never looks tawdry. She always looks beautiful. And you capture the essence of beauty without, you know, going for cheap tricks or going for nudity or any kind of uh, any kind of cheap um, device or, or nastiness. You just, you just draw beautiful women and you do a good job of it. And I'm like, why, thank you. She hit it right on the button, exactly what I, what I, what I do. I don't mind drawing beautiful. I don't want to draw, you know, what's wrong for it? That's, that's, that's such a bad word. Um, I don't like, I like capturing beauty without capture, making it, like, I'll draw pinups, but I won't, and I can even draw a little cheesecakey, but I won't draw, like, just, like, out there nudity. And why? I'm not a prude, but at the same time, there's just so much of that already out there that I don't really see the need to add to that, you know? It's not what I'm into. But, uh, having said that, Murray, if you do fall asleep, it's okay. I fall asleep watching streamers all the time. My wife's out of town. I will sometimes pop on a stream and fall asleep watching a stream. It's like watching TV, man. I'd say it's like watching TV that's live, but some TV is live. Um, if you're watching the news, it's live. But wouldn't you rather watch me? I mean, think about it. So much trouble in this world. Just watch me, you know? Who wants to watch the news anyway? You can watch baby Grogu. You can wake up in the middle of the night and say, oh, look, Grogu. He's almost done. He's doing an amazing job on it, you would say. I don't know. <laughs> I'm being boastful now. But all kidding aside, though, you know, I mean, I've done it before. I watch streamers till I fall asleep. But, um, yeah, just don't compare yourself to other folks. Like, I'll see, some, like, for example, there's a guy on here that streams a jar of peanut butter. Oh, I'd feel so bad if you kept talking to me if I'm asleep, though. <laughs> it's all right. There's the VOD. I'm just kidding. I wouldn't want people to watch the VOD. <laughs> but, I mean, all kidding aside, though, like, this is real talk real quick. Um, don't don't let somebody else's success get you down. If I can't cheer for somebody, I'll unfollow them. Because I don't want to be there being jealous of what they're accomplishing. I want to be there to say, yay, friendo, you did it. And if I'm not there saying, yay, friendo, you did it, and I'm saying, why did they have this and not me? I need to leave. Because I don't need somebody to be, I don't need to be ingenuine to somebody that needs support. I don't want to be there being like, why you and not me? I need to leave. Because that's about me now and not about them. And I don't need to follow somebody like that. You know? But also it doesn't help, it, it hurt, it doesn't hurt to interact with your friends that do find success. Like a lot of my friends are, are cosplayers. And I've drawn tons and 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 tons. And I'll stop saying it, but it's literally an immense pile. You wouldn't believe a fan art. And never once has the person involved or the the show involved ever shared any of it. And then my friends will do cosplay groups of shows and they're being shared by the show and Netflix and all this other stuff. And I'm like, do you know how many things I've drawn over the last almost eight, seven, eight years that I've been on social media and have never once been shared? I'm like, and then sometimes I message ones that I could feel like I could message. I'm like, please, please, please appreciate this because I have literally drawn and done so much fan art and have never been exposed in any way through social media by the show that I'd drawn or by the people that were involved, the actors or, or anything involved. So please appreciate that for what that is. You don't just make a cosplay and be like, oh, look, I've got this. They're going to share my stuff. It doesn't happen like that because I know I've struggled for years and it's never happened for me once. For people that I, I, I could trust, I'm not only saying I'm coming off as salty or ungrateful, but it's, it was a lot. It was a lot. I mean, I'm talking years and years and years. And then recently, um, I did a drawing of Gwen Stefani. A fan group posted it. And then Gwen Stefani herself posted it. But along the way, my tag got moved, removed. And I was like, I was really upset about it. And the fan group was like, you know, Gwen Stefani's not really good with using social media. She's good at sharing stuff, but she doesn't understand the importance of hashtagging. And I was like, okay, I do like Gwen Stefani. It sucks that she, my tag got stripped off, that no one knows who drew it. But a few people did still find it because of her resharing it. I think they must have looked for Gwen Stefani fan art in recents and found me that way. But they were pretty clever folks. But again, I was upset about it because I was like, this was, could have been a big break for me as an artist. And then it's gone because no one knows to trace it back, you know? But I'm also like, and one of my friends was like, really? Gwen Stefani just shared your drawing and the thing you're griping is about that you, you weren't tagged in it. Can you be grateful? And I'm like, they're right. It's a big deal. I literally drew Gwen Stefani on her 50th birthday, not knowing it was her 50th birthday. I just was like, 
I think I'll draw Gwen Stefani I've always meant to and just drew her and it was on her 50th birthday perfect timing without even trying so I learned to be grateful because I was like you know what I am being a little, I'm being a jerk you know here I it's true I mean how many people have, have drawn Gwen Stefani tag or no tag and never been shared and here I am being shared and I'm just complaining that I wasn't I wasn't tagged in it properly so it, it made me realize and then recently Copic shared my drawing that I did of my friend because I, went, I was in the Copic market contest and they didn't tag it right and a friend uh, a Twitter uh, a new friend was like hey tag the artist you didn't do it right you left a space and it didn't tag him in it so I reached out to Copic and said hey could you fix that please it's missing and they were like sure and they fixed it so that was kind of nice I'm getting a headache no you know what if you're getting a headache go to sleep honestly I, I, I know that sounds really bad go to sleep I'm getting tired I'm not making as much progress as I'd hoped I'm gonna do a little bit of his robe under parts, and I've got I've got to get off too, because I want to. I think I'm gonna play some Overwatch with my friends before they get off. As you know, Care Bear was here earlier, I think, and it wouldn't hurt to raid somebody early. Plus, my computer's been freezing. I've been dropping frames. I'm at 9.7. I've dropped 23,000 frames at a rate of 90. 90. Um, I'm gonna back this up so it's off the camera. So if I move this, it won't be on the screen. So, anyway. And I've got to download the old VODs too before they go away. You know what I might do? I might take away all the markers <laughs> off the camera so that when I, when I do the video, if the markers move, you won't be able to tell. That's a good plan. I have a good idea, half a good idea. Okay, I'll be back from the next stream. Yeah, what I'll do is I'll probably wrap it up here. Uh, I'll probably finish up this part of his robe and then wrap it up. And I'll do the background, the hand, and the other parts another day. What I'll do is I'll do a raid right now. Let me do the, the quick parts of the robe real quick that way you don't feel to feel bad because i'm getting tired it's time i want to play overwatch with my friends if i can play with my friends i don't play too late though because i've been too many late nights in a row but it's been a, it's been a rough week the end of the week was terrible for work my work my work situation was not good this end of the week a lot of stress this week from work um so anyway that'd be a good time to de-stress um well thank you <laughs> I appreciate it. Please, yeah, drop it again. I'll be back next Tuesday. I sometimes do gaming streams on Thursday. I don't think I'll do a gaming stream this Thursday. So the next time I'll be back will be Thursday, Tuesday followed by um, Tuesday followed by uh, Friday. So I stream Tuesday, Fridays, 9 p.m. Uh, Eastern. So I should be back Tuesday next week to continue where I leave off here. And then I'll have streams on Friday again. Same time. Same time as, as now. And where's my five? Where's five? Yeah, I think I'm, I think I'll before I, before I stop filming, I will take all the markers off the off the surface so I can arrange them, because you won't see them. <laughs> if I take them off the screen, you won't see them. You're like, oh, they just disappeared. He just cleaned up all his workspace. And between videos, you won't notice the difference. So I got that going for me. That'd be pretty fun. I'm getting tired of doing this though. <laughs> Okay, so, but I'm lit tired. Okay, then take a nap, then shoot the missiles. If y'all remember End of the World, <laughs> but I'm lit tired. Okay, then we take a nap, and then we fire the missiles. Yeah, we need to get you to bed though, dude. Okay, let me do the raid. The raid, by the way, if you stay for the raid, it gives you points. So, channel points. And you never shared your drawing, my dude. Why didn't you share one of your drawings? It's okay if you don't want to. Like, I'm, I have the same rule as Devicat. If you don't want to share something, if you, don't, if you don't feel like sharing, that's fine. I also, as long as it's safe for work, if it's nothing if it's nothing that's inappropriate, that's the only thing I ask. Don't share anything that's inappropriate because I don't know who's watching. So, you know, please don't share anything that's, you know, deemed unsavory. But I think you you know what that would be. You know what my channel's like. So, as long as you don't share anything unsavory, you're fine. Um... Yeah, I've got that part done. So what I'm going to do is I'm going I'm to stop it here. Let me go ahead and sweep up all the markers. And even if I don't put them in the case, I'll just sweep them off the surface so that I can arrange them off camera and you'll never know the difference. So I just dump them all in there. Just dump all the Copic markers in there. And then I can arrange them like tonight or tomorrow. I might take them to arrange up between Overwatch games. And then anything else, I'll like, do that so I have a good stopping point. Like that, see? And I can also take a quick photo. And then, let me switch to the main camera here. Just because it's not. Uh, which drawing was that was what I didn't get to hear over Voyager? What drawing are you talking about?
Okay, I don't... Uh, what what draw, um, You said which drawing... That was what I didn't get to hear over Voyager. Are you talking about maybe um, the Gwen Stefani drawing? Because she shared one of my drawings I did. I don't know if I have it handy. If I have it handy, I'll show you real quick. But I know you, you should go to bed. While I'm, while I'm thinking about if I've got it handy, I'm going to pull up my stream so I can see you to raid. Yeah, that's why I need to get you off to, uh, off of here, guys. I appreciate your support, but I don't want you to feel like you need to stay the whole time. Let me find a stream real quick, and I will pull up the Gwen Stefani drawing if I've got it handy. And I can show it to you real quick. I'm going to look real quick because I've got the long cord on this, and I've got a cord extender I can find. If I can find the Gwen Stefani drawing, I'll show you on camera. Oh, I didn't know I had this comic sketchbook. Nito completo. Cetus Lapidus. But yeah, she shared it. And then um, Copic shared my other drawing, which I have handy, but I don't want to get it out of its box. Um... Because that was, it was in the contest, and I showed it last time. Nagy's on. Nagy's cool, but I don't think she's gaming tonight, is she? What's Nagy doing? Just chatting. Nagy, really? Do some art, you bum. <laughs> I'm only playing. Oh, I forgot about those wonderful things. It may not even be in here. Got a bunch of Inktobers from about seven years ago. I thought I had the Gwen Stefani in here. I may have tucked her away in a place where she'll be safe. If I can't find her, I'll, I'll try to bring her for next stream. Because I, I, I gotta find a, a good stream to, to raid. Man, everybody's out on a Friday night. Could have raided me, Nagy. I'm just kidding, she's not. <laughs> she just started, she's not gonna raid anybody. Oh, there's a cool person doing art. Seven of Seven's on. Oh, Cassidy Austin's on. We need to raid Cassidy Austin. She's awesome. She does cool things. She's cool. I just met her the other day. She was the one that was part of the... She was the one I, I that was raided after me. Like, I was raided. She was raided. I, I mean, I raided Nekka TJ. I don't think she's... Nikki's on. No, she's not. But, yeah, that was the one on Tuesday I, I found. So, she needs to be... We'll raid her. If I can find the Gwen Stefani. I cannot find the Gwen Stefani drawing. So I think I'm gonna call it a night here, guys. And we'll raid Cassie. I think she's relatively clean. Like she, I always like to make sure the, art, the channels are clean. I don't want you going to a channel where somebody's dropping F-bombs. I don't mind that kind of language, but I don't want to put my viewers into that kind of a language stream. Because, you know, again, I don't, just because I'm comfortable with something doesn't mean I'm, I'm, I don't want my viewers to be subjected to something they may or may not be comfortable with. So I would not do that. Uh, but Cassie's pretty cool. She does some really spooky kind of art things. Let me see what she's working on and make sure it's nothing questionable i mean she can't go against tos anyway tos of twitch is totally different let me look at cassidy and see what she's doing she only got 10 viewers so she could use a boost painting wonderland part three i don't know what she was working on it was something really strange we'll probably go to her because she's super cool oh it looks cool no it doesn't look cool we'll raid cassidy that sounds good cassidy's awesome she's a traditional artist Imagine if you raided Bob Ross, that'd be hilarious. <laughs> the thing is, I, I've thought about it, but it would do no good. And I don't want to waste a good raid because this helps other people in the community too. You don't have to keep looking for it. That's okay. I'll find it. I'll find it. I've got it. My studio's a mess. You got to see it. It's a mess. So as I'm cleaning it, I'll find it. And when I find it, I'll show you. Anyway, let me, let's go ahead and wrap this up for the night. I'm going to leave the, the drawing stuff here. Um, I want to do an unboxing video, but I can't. Well, the camera's in the way it is because I can't move Baby Yoda. I mean, I could maybe move Baby Yoda. Oh, no, 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 no. We'll see. Let me switch to the end stream. Okay, we're going to go, and we're going to raid Cassidy, because she's mega cool. Cassidy's cool. She's she's very open about talking about mental health and stuff, which is super awesome as well, because I think that's super important. Let's go raid her. Um, I have to do this right, because I'm not used to doing the raids. There's a, there's a protocol to do, and that is like you have to pull up your own channel, but pull up the other channel to make sure they're actually not just getting off. Now, the thing is, I know Cassidy's aren't, she doesn't, she doesn't come on until this time. Let's, I'm pulling up my channel producer right now. I promise you, I'm, I'm getting this set up. It's channel, creator dashboard. There we go. And then we'll get off of streaming, because I'm tired. It's 11.30, and you, you should go to bed. And I don't want this to be, oh, wow, live, excellent quality. Yeah, that's how I do. I do excellent quality. Um, <laughs> let's do raid channel. And we'll do Cassie. Thanks, guys. You're so lovely for coming in. Thank you for coming in, chatting. If you didn't chat, if you just lurked, lurks are love. And if you know my stream script I have pulled up, you'll see that it says that very same thing. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. I'll be back Tuesday working on Baby Yoda. And I'll try to post photos on social media soon. And be good. And if you can't be good, at least be safe.
not a fan of pineapples, but it says, oh, Jamie, <laughs> thank you so much for the raid. Hi, friends. Hi, Jason. Thank you so much for the raid. Welcome, everybody. We were just talking about pizza. 